the ends Tolem Loi. I'm going to afford you an opportunity as an MSC of the department to speak for 45 minutes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair, for affording me this opportunity. Greetings to Honorable Speaker, Ms. Nontembego Boyce, Honorable Deputy Speaker, Honorable Mlule Gindobe, the Honorable Premier, Honorable Zigalala, Honorable Members of the Executive Council, Honorable Members of the uh, the legislature, Isilo Samabandla, the provincial chairperson of the traditional leaders in our province, Inkosi Yasema and Teliza, religious leaders and traditional leaders, mayors and councillors, officials of the Department of Agriculture and Rural Development and all our entities, sectoral stakeholders and the broader business community. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me a great pleasure to stand before this August House to give a holistic view of the department annual capital and expenditure account and also to outline the major plans by the department. In doing so, I want to acknowledge the Premier for having accorded me this executive responsibility to do so for and on behalf of KwaZulu Natal government. Honorable Chair, it is often said that one of the things that everyone on earth has in common is, is the need for food, which therefore makes agriculture production the bedrock of modern society. societies. Agriculture is not only the critical pillar on which the economies of the world are founded, but it is in the linchpin of the architecture of the global economy. As we know, it becomes without it there is no economy to speak of. It is because of this reason that one of the founding fathers of the liberation struggle on the African continent, Julius Nyerere, once said, we must give agriculture the central place in our developmental planning, for agriculture is the foundation of our progress. I close quotes. The Department of Agriculture and Rural Development is a key department within the economy economic cluster in stimulating growth and job creation, and it remains the kernel of, in creating sustainable economic sector in the whole value chain of economy, including processing, packaging, logistics, warehousing, and distribution. Ma Madam Chair, the approach of the sixth administration to agriculture is that it is not just a way of life, but a critical sector for economic growth and wealth. Our approach is that we need to produce more than we import agricultural product. The current situation where we import more than we produce, we need to change that. We are changing how everyone looks and take agriculture. We believe agriculture to be the economic game changer and a business that can be used to revive our rural economies. All the things that we produce, we, we have to add value and take control of the entire agriculture value chain. We have to get involved in, sitting, in setting up industries and produce and process product into goods and services or consumables. It is in this, it is the time that we add value to everything we produce to add to our people are self-sufficient in terms of food production, but also to participate in global value chain for economic benefit and job creation. Honorable Chair, let me remind the House, this House that we present this process shortly after the 108th birthday celebration of one of the most South African liberation struggle icon and a veteran of the struggle for human rights, the late Utata Walter Sisul. It is forever my hope that Africa and the world will never forget the freedom they gave to all South African black and white as asphalt in the in our freedom charter as well as in our bill of rights we may may we also be reminded that the present we present this budget in june and in the eve of the yet another unforgettable tragedy that took place in soweto in june 1976 
when young people were mowed down by the apartheid security forces for demanding what is normal and in an unnormal society. Honorable Chair, as people, we dare not forget the sacrifices that were made by the class of 1976. Our liberation icons, such as Dadasi Sulu, become, because they remind us of the journey that we still have to travel in creating a society founded on equality, justice, and human dignity. While we have achieved a lot over the past 25 years, however, we cannot afford to be complain complacent and to lose our sense of focus on our strategic goals to create a non-racial, prosperous, non-sexist, and a democratic South Africa from the reign of our apartheid in device. In this regard, we wish to take this opportunity to remind this House that after the 2020 is also the centenary year of the two other gigantic figures of South African struggle for liberation and human rights, the late Ubaba, Raymond Mshaba, and also the Lion of the Midlands, Ubaba Uherikwala. We have no doubt that their contribution will continue to be the source of an inspiration as we continue with our struggle to create a society of our dreams. Honorable Chair, let us remind ourselves further that the state, in his state of the nation address in February 2020, the President, His Excellency Cyril Ramaphosa, under, underlined the central role of agriculture and its significance to the sixth administration when he made his remark that, I open quote, agriculture is one of the industries with the greatest potential for growth. This sector is expected to play a meaningful role to give effect, effect to drive agriculture and inclusive rural development, I close quote. Honorable Chair and members of the House, consistent with the directive by the President and also our Premier, Honorable Zigalara, which he articulated also in his SOP uh, in March 2020, he says, I open quote, the province of KwaZulu Natal is posed to expand and diversify the agricultural economy, I close quote. In response to these directives, the department is posed to explore the letter and the spirit of the industrialization trajectory of, of the country in agro-processing as well as general commercial farming by internal, inter, intentionally increasing support to potential commercial farmers in the province. We are determined and, and stand ready to provide dedicated and efficient support to all the agricultural value chain as key drivers to KZ short and long-term sustainable economic growth and transformation. It is abundantly clear that we need to pay attention in growing small-scale farmers in terms of the material support across various commodities. Key to our advance is to support youth and women and people with disability to be major players in this sector. The advent of small agriculture in, in the sector whereby new technologies driven by artificial intelligence, robotic, internet of things, non-technology and quantum computing are shaping the future and replacing old ways of farming. In this regard, we call on our young, on our youth to take leadership in agriculture, special, especially in agro-processing and other value chains. It is against this background that the department undertook a province-wide program to disseminate information to youth and women through the summits held by the department in recent past month. The masses of our people's social condition are not getting better because of rising unemployment, poverty, and hunger, and, there, and therefore cannot wait any longer. The, economies, the economic crisis present, presented by COVID-19 means more people will join the millions of hungry and unemployed. With our own government recently predicting that unemployment is set to reach 50%, food security remain a critical challenge. It, it is not if it's not addressed prudently and urgently, it can easily become the seat of social up upheavals and also 
emerge a national security threat. The balance between the usage of available land in tribal land maximally for household consumption and the re-engineering of mindset for producing for market can no longer be postponed. We must insist to our people that the entry to the agricultural economy does not only lie on the acquisition of existing commercial farm, but they have land and the very land available in our villages and our backyard. Honorable Chair, we want to state clearly that the department's plan enshrined in our annual performance plan are not a pie in the, in the sky, but measurable and attainable within timelines. Government has, a fun, has finalized the 2019-2024 medium-term strategic framework, which outlines the program of action for this term. MTSF in the, is the implementation framework that moves government closer to the goals of the National Development Plan. The current MTF, MTSF is built on seven strategic priorities of government, which have been further augmented by the eighth priority outlined by the Honorable Premier, Honorable Zegalal, in his state of the province address. And so this budget vote is a presentation by the Department of Agriculture and Rural Development in terms of policy priorities and strategic intervention that will, will be implemented in line with the aforementioned government program of action. Chairperson, as I present the budget speech for 20. 2021, I will also re be reporting on the several commitments I, I made last year to this House. This account is important because this administration is looking into the five-year horizon within its delivery mechanism and available resources. Honorable Chair and Honorable Members, I made a commitment to this House that filling the position of the head of department and, the, and that of the CFO was my priority in order to bring certainty and stability in the system. It gives me great pleasure to report to this House that indeed we have filled both positions. We have concrete plan to ensure that the filling of our vacancies, of which 30 of these were already on the interview stage. However, the process was affected by the recent down lockdown. Therefore, it is deeply in, in disheartening to report, to report that the continuation of this process is now hanging in the balance due to recent budget cuts uh, concentrated on the capping of the coronavirus pandemic. Honorable members, we have strengthened partnership with organizations representing people with disability in order to ensure that profiles of candidates with disability are obtained for consist consideration when filling posts. Department is in the process of reviewing its organizational structure to ensure that it is able to deliver on its mandate. Of particular importance is the creation of an in-house internal audit or and risk management directorate. This directorate will be responsible for the establishment and the implementation of the proactive measures to deliver with fraud, to deal with fraud and corruption. Honorable members, it is my pleasure to report that the department has been able to spend 96.2% of its budget for 2019-2020. It was an improvement from 88.9 actual expenditure achieved in the 2018-2019 financial year. This is but one area in the, in the department's turnaround plan that focuses on the change management and efficiency in the supply chain management unit, particularly in the contract management, supply chain, and performance management. In response to the coronavirus pandemic in Wazul Natal through food and nutrition security program. Chairperson, as the COVID-19 pandemic unfolds around the world rapidly and in South Africa, people in Wazul Natal are now awakening to the new reality and the magnitude of the impact that this pandemic has, has on people. 
food and nutri nutrition security is one of the real dimension. Dimension as many people household are affected by the lockdown, closure of business, and loss of income for many families. We applaud the government's effort aimed at, at cushioning the most vulnerable amongst us, which include the, unannou the announcement of various social safety nets, such as the increase in the budget of social grants and the unemployment, unemployed allowance of 350 rand. More still need to be done as, we, as these remain temporary and short measures. Generally, COVID-19 could have an impact in the overall agricultural sector demand side in South Africa and abroad, with a possible ripple effect on food prices and agricultural market. The COVID-19 pandemic has created uncertainty and disruption of economic growth. In addition, food distribution channels could face some disruption from transport interruption and quarantine measures, which, could, which would cause impact on stable commodity. Indeed, with the effect of this uh, pandemic amongst those that are vulnerable in our society, I have directed the head of department to prioritize the budget so that more focus can be on food security. This reprioritization will see our intervention in food security increasing from the current allocation of 10.7 million to 40 million. This intervention will be realized by Department of Agriculture and Rural Development through making an effort to engage the community to fully participate in their own development in order to ensure sustainability of their, of their project, even after life, its lifespan. Collaborating with the Department of Human Settlement and Department of Education to promote one home, one garden, vegetable and fruit trees, and to promote school gardens as a long-term solution to food security, respectively. Appropriate memorandum of understanding will be signed with each stakeholder. Partnering with relevant stakeholders who are willing to provide support needed by Department of Agriculture and Rural Development and KZN household in the race to defeat the virus and its impact on people's health and livelihood. Use of technology when necessary to coordinate and keep in touch to get all preparatory work done. KwaZulu Natal continues to be amongst the provinces with the highest number of households who have inadequate access to food and has seen a slight increase of this phenomenon from 23.4% in 2017 to 24.5% uh, in 2018 against this national average of 20.20. Whilst this is, the this, is a dependent, this is dependent on the number of various var uh, variables, the department will seek to strengthen food security programs in cooperation with other sector department and stakeholders to promote increased access increase access to food, especially by vulnerable groups in our communities. Department is, however, embroidered by the assistance in the number of households involved in agriculture reported, reported to be 18.2% in 2018 against the national average. Through the department's food security intervention program, in the last financial year, approximately 20,758 households were supported with food production initiative. I have directed the department to find ways of uh, scale, scaling up organic uh, permaculture and conservation farming programs as part of our urban agriculture concept and promotion of food security within the urban and peri-urban areas of our province. Furthermore, I have also directed the similar projects be piloted in each local municipality within our province. COVID-19 relief scheme. Honorable Chair, following the pronouncement by the Minister of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development to support small 
Holder Farmers Through COVID-19 Relief Scheme. The response from farmers far exceed expectation. However, a significant number of applicants were disqualified owing to non-compliance with stipulated uh, criteria. I am pleased to announce that the province was allocated 99.7 million to support 2,812 smallholders farmers across the province and of KwaZulu Natal. About 1,222 of these farmers are women, consist of 43.5%. 4, Commodity priorities to support include poultry, li livestock, fruits, winter field um, crops, and vegetables. Furthermore, government through the National Department distributed over 40,000 personal protective equipment in a form of mask for farm workers through farmers union in the province. Honorable members and honorable chair, farm workers and farm dollars have emerged as one social cluster that is hardest hit by the famine during the COVID-19 lockdown period due to no income which has resulted in dire shortage of nutrition in their diet. This has prompted the government of KwaZulu-Natal to intervene by, in, by forming a private partner, public partnership with the African Farmers Association of South Africa, which will result in 70 beets uh, slaughtered in, in an effort to ease famine by boosting their protein intake. Honorable members and honorable chair, our agricultural development funding policy will equip, will require a review, which will, will usher in a mechanism of comp comp comprehensive support package to promote the commercialization of strategic agricultural enterprise. It will be funded and cushioned over the MTEF. Period. The policy review will be concluded and consulted with relevant stakeholders before the end of the current financial year. Our master plan, uh, honorable members, I'm happy also to report that the draft has been uh, developed and is undergoing further refinement following the series of consultation within the industry. The plan now in, incorporates the rural development strategy. The Department of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development is in the process of drafting a national agricultural agriculture master plan, which will align ourselves with the national government once their, their work has been done. We're also going to align our own to ensure that uh, we have a seamless operation within our, our operations. The multi-planting season programs, honorable members, as the premier of Kwazulu launched an integrated planting program in Umkanyagute district coined Pesgo in 2019, the launch ushered in a fresh breath of a new life in this multi-season -plant, multi planting program. Madam Chair, I'm happy to report that the department has set aside 77 million to regenerate the multi-planting season Pesgo program in the current product production year. Even though the province has experienced unfavorable weather conditions resulting in a delay, rains, and consequently the start of the planting season, the department successfully assisted farming farmers to plant over 11,000 hectares in the financial year 2019-2020. Department will accelerate, accelerate the program through the, uh, the use of promotion and promotion of conservation litigation uh, to enable de development of more areas and the protection of natural resources. Honorable Chair, I noted with concern that the procurement of production input was not uh, synchronic synchronized with the outset of the planting season, leading to the late delivery of our production input to farmers. Hence, the department reviewed its procurement strategy for this, for the production of production input to minimize delays in the delivery of input and the commercial, comment, commencement of the planting process. With regard to the extension and advisory services, agricultural 
remains the core function of the department. It, re it requires full oversight by the department as a function charged with the responsibility of being at the front line of service provision. Honorable members, as the department, we are committed to revive extension services and to restore its dignity, which is why the, the, the province of KwaZulu-Natal hosted its provincial leg of the National Extension and Advisory Service Summit and award ceremony. These awards are aimed at promoting agricultural innovation and system approach in enhancing effectiveness of extensions and advisory services. Honorable Chair, the department announced the development of the plan to produce its own seeds and seedlings cap capability in order to reduce reliance and, and, ra and rising costs within the context of declining budget allocation. I'm happy to announce that the plan has now been finalized and endorsed by the Provincial Executive Council. It is, this is a, blood, a bold step by the sixth administration, which will see over time the establishment of five mega nurseries to produce seedlings and fruit trees. The research stations were identified for the establishment of these nurseries. These are situated in the following areas, that is Sedar, Dandi, Kokstad, Josini, and Mpangeni. These research stations are geographical spread across the province under different bio resources, resource groups, and can specialize in producing different seeds and seedlings. Honorable Chair, in response to the directive of the, the Honorable President Premier in his State of the Nation address of the province address in 2019, <clears throat> for the department to conduct assessment of land reform farm in the, in the province. I am happy to announce that the report has been uh, concluded and its funding will be tabled to the Provincial Executive Council. The assessment has confirmed that a significant number of farms are facing serious operational challenges and readily with social uh, dynamic, which have rendered them uh, dysfunctional. The report revealed that there are symptoms of regression in the agrarian transformation agenda owing to leasing back of these farms by beneficiaries to the white farming corporations. This report indicates that the, an investment of approximately 5.5 billion would be required to resuscitate these farms into full production. Government will work with all the stakeholders within the sector and financial institution to, de to develop sustainable financing mechanism to put these farms back into production in the medium term. The department has held a call by His Excellency President Cyril Ramaphosa, who, re who released specific land for agricultural production Accompanying, accompanied by post-settlement support package. In this regard, department is in consultation with the National Department of Agriculture, Land Reform, and Rural Development to, pr to prepare business plan for farmers fall falling within the category in Guazul Natal, which will be supported through the Comprehensive Agricultural Support Program Conditional Grant. AgriHubs, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members, the Department will take a leave out of the Premier's State of the Province address on the 4th of March to ensure that we become a game changer in agro-processing and a key catalyst for radical economic transformation of the current domestic supply chain capabilities of the province. This approach will ensure the expansion of the agricultural food and logistic hubs. Intertwined with the agri-park model, government warehouse, operational VULA uh, through research and district development model. Honorable members, allow me to unpack and expand on the initiative that will be implemented in, the, in four districts of the province. These initiatives follow a, a commodity competitive and comparative advantages, advantage clustering approach. Giant strand 
towards the implementation of, the con of this concept has been undertaken. And, the, and this phase of development, a feasible study, a feasibility study and business case, a viable business plan for these four hubs, co coupled with the implementation framework, has been concluded. And the implementation of the first phase of this project is expected to, to create 540 jobs during one, phase one of this implementation. With regard to the vulnerable groups, you know, our women, youth, and people with disability, Honorable Chair and the members, we have, uh, as the department, resolved to and to measure progress made in this in, in promotion and also in advancing these uh, groups in agricultural sector development programs. In this regard, the department will support projects owned by women, youth, and people with disability, such as the one that I participated in, which was coordinated in partnership with Utingo Organic Academy. The, this academy was founded by Zamangubane, an agricultural graduate. She sought to utilize her acquired skills in organic farming methods. She left formal employment to pursue an advocacy career and contribute to the advancement and promotion of vulnerable people within our society. Through this initiative, I was introduced to ITEMBA for the disabled project situated at Dumisan Makai village in Umtlatuze local municipality. The project supported 19 disabled people who have established a practical nursery that propagate organic seed, seedlings uh, that are sold to the community of Dumsani Makaya village for their own household gardens. They have also established a relationship with the community garden uh, involved in organic farming in a neighboring ward. They purchase seedlings for their nursery. They are also mentors to some of the agricultural graduates placed by the department on farmers and enterprises as part of, of its graduate development program. Honorable Chair, fellow citizens, we have confirmed to the Premier and our youth parliament that we, we are heartened by and inspired by examples of community initiative and activi activism by women like Zamanguban. During this youth month, we are also a strong hold a strong belief that the youth of this province continue to draw aspiration from the activism and courage of the 1976 generation. The youth of this country had said it was a hand, it was it want to be hands on and not hands out in this ANC led government and is committed to actively support the youth initi initiative in agriculture. We also, as the department, has run the Female Entrepreneur Awards Program to acknowledge, encourage, and increase the participation of women and women with disability in agricultural sector, thus empowering women to own and manage agricultural land mm -hmm. to their enterprises and to be involved in the country's economic mm -hmm. transformation. The aim is to mainstream women young women and women with disability in the sector through food security, job creation, economic growth, and poverty elevation. The program has a long-term ambition of leveraging women entrepreneurs from being subsistence and smallholders, producers, to commercial entrepreneurs who also venture into export market. It offers awards to female entrepreneurs who ex in the cultural sector. The department has also taken the initiative to include all the winners from the 2016 up to the 2019. Honorable Chair, we are also proud to mention that KwaZulu-Natal is the only province that recognizes senior citizens in the, in the MEC Special Awards because we value the contribution of our elders and the wisdom they contribute. They continue to impart to the younger generation on all material on all matters of agriculture. The Youth Empowerment and Initiative, Honorable Members, 
The scale of youth unemployment in the social economic challenge is a social economic challenge that requires a multi-pronged response from government and all other sectors. In this regard, the Department of Agriculture and Rural Development will launch an ambitious initiative that unlocks 10,000 direct and indirect jobs for youth. Out of school, unemployed, graduate, and those young people who are who have a passion in agriculture. Our youth empowerment initiative aimed at assisting in achieving the production required to, to fill the asset order. Honorable members, this government will implement six empowerment programs set aside for vulnerable groups through Department of Agriculture and Rural Development. We will roll out the youth strategy in, informed by the youth in agriculture and rural development in Daba held in 2019. This youth initiative will be housed under Inkunzi Sematoleni Umtente Ushaba Usamila program, which will include the establishment of directorate of youth, women, and disabled people in agriculture and rural development. Department plans to massively upscale the EPWP program to include the following five pillars, mainly the EPWP youth, EPWP youth owned <clears throat> enterprises and incubator, ICT training and technology training, uh, fourth industrial revolution and youth farm uh, experimental learner. EPWP Community Work Project Department will employ youth to protect and enhance sustainable, sustainable use and conservation of agricultural resources through programs such as land care, bioresource bio survey and mapping, controlling of alien plants, thinning of bush, encroaching species and sustainable management of crop, cropping and grazing land. Rural youth will assist with food security, minor irrigation and engineering project works, such as water harvesting, deep tanks, animal handling, fencing and input storage facilities. Finally, rural youth interested in primary animal health care will be employed to assist with dipping, recording keeping, animal identification and rabies control. The province currently program of farm production support unit and agri-hubs agri agri will be used as a springboard for the provi provision of land tractor implements, uh, inputs, agricultural training and business skills to rural youth. Honorable Chair, the department will also col collaborate with donors investors or high-tech NGOs to give rural youth exposure to the world of the fourth industrial revolution. This opportunity will expose young people to the field of remote sensing, precision, mapping and drone imaginary to defect pets, disease, nutrient and water deficiency, smart soil uh, sensors reporting in real time on the status of the soil, the weather condition, and allow smart irrigation. Rural youth will also be exposed to contained and vertical farming, Renew renewable energy of grid a photovoltaic system using Dubai Trade Port, Moses Kotane Institute and University of Kwazulu-Natal as the potential strategic partners. Uh, Honorable Chair, the department currently run an excellent program that places unemployed graduate with commercial and land reform beneficiaries as well as agricultural enterprises in order to gain virtual uh, workplace experience. It will continue to implement this youth farming exper experiential training program. Honorable Chair, agriculture infrastructure remain the, the cornerstone of the promotion of growth and development in the sector and ensures seamless production and, and improved productivity if well-planned and coordinated. 
department is establishing a new infrastructure and rehabilitation existing, existing one, such as deep tanks, a dams, borehole, irrigation fences, and storage facilities, amongst other, to support small holder farmers. Over the years, the department has been involved in the development of agriculture infrastructure, such as tunnel pro projects to assist vegetable production farmers to produce good quality vegetable for market. Livestock infrastructure such as sheep, sharing, shed, poultry houses and pickeries have also been given prominent support to ensure livestock development. Many of the failed area in the province will require new fencing to ensure the animal and crops protection. Department thus prioritizes fencing pro projects to mitigate and control animals since this pose, poses a threat to the agricultural production, especially during the drought period. Investment in infrastructure, therefore, continue to be the critical component of the department's strategic agrarian transformative agenda. According to the department, will implement 114 agricultural infrastructure related project in the in the province during this financial year which will help provide a necessary base for the department of enter enterprises mainly by small smallholder farmers the agricultural infrastructure rollout program which will in, be inclusive of the maintenance will see an investment of over 28 million rand the land care program Honorable chain members, it is through its land uh, care program, the department continues to optimize uh, productivity and the sustainability of agricultural nature resources by promoting community participation in sustainable land use and its management. Community-based projects amounting to 42 million were implemented in 2019-2021 financially and over 1,000 EPWP jobs opportunities were, were created. We're intending to create more than 1,100 jobs in this current financial year. <clears throat> uh, we are going to spend more than 53 million, uh, as we have set aside for that, uh, for this project to be rolled out also in the 2021 financial year. Research and Technology Department has embarked on the ex ex exciting journey to convert, to convert its research station into a center of excellence and innovation in order to respond to research needs and technology development within the province. Honorable members and, and the chair, agriculture is, having, is heavily affected by the adverse weather condition. Current, currently, science has means by which to accurately, accurately predict and control weather patterns to help alleviate the harsh effect of the drought in the province. Department is promoting the use of drought tolerant seeds suitable for the different climates developed by our researchers. The department is invested on conducting hemp production product research to identify the varieties and their use in order to, produce, to provide opportunities for small-scale farmers. Mm -hmm. Our research good? team is also currently engaged in research activities that include precisely optim optimization that will solve many current problems in agriculture, such as reverting back to some indigenous production element and fourth industrial revolution technologies that will have a significant impact on the weather-related problem, problems. I don't know, Chair, you were calling me, or should I continue? I was saying your time will soon be exhausted. Thank you, uh, Honorable Chair. We have uh, analytical uh, laboratory, Mazubuya Masisweni, which we want to report also that the department is in the drive to revive indigenous knowledge through the a promulgation of plants that grows in our natural environment and have been hu humankind as food and medicine 
in almost all cultures of generation. Food security policies globally have almost completed, completely ignored the potential nutritive value of indigenous plants, especially those harvested in impoverished communities. Yet these underutilized species play a crucial role in food security, income generation, and also food culture and can contribute to nutrient uh, requirements. The necessary for medical herbs and indigenous crops will be developed in any of, of research station. The purpose of necessary will be to, to conserve those herbs that are around, about to vanish, and also to serve as a resource for those that are required by traditional healers. Traditional healers will be trained on sustainable harvesting of these plants that may still require to be harvested wide. A list of medical herbs in, in demand will be developed in consultation with traditional healers. Herbs identified will be mapped for their potential and sustainability production in their respective geographical areas based on climate requirement. The fourth industrial revolution and impact of ICT on agriculture. Agriculture is a re representative industry in which inputs and output are inconsistent. In terms of the worldwide food production, enough food is produced for the entire population. Yet 30 to 50% of production produced food is decadent, while many die of starvation. About 80% of water on the planet is used for agriculture, yet only 20% of viable crop is grown. And the remaining unused surplus is discarded. In the UK, the use of nit nitrogen fertilizer resulted in blue disease. Each of these problems can be resolved via precision agriculture. Honourable, Honourable Member, Chair. Honourable Chair. Your time has lapsed. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. May I uh, indulge uh, and ask you to give me uh, to finish, then we'll take from my minutes for your response. With pleasure to that. Thank you. We have uh, agricultural qualities, um, as, as um, uh, members will, will, will recall and know. And uh, we had the department in line with the national priority number two, education, skill, health, and provi provincial. Uh, five priority education skills development continue to provide agricultural education and training through Sedari and Oscar Colleges of Agriculture uh, to a wide clientele. Uh, I'm not going to go beyond that uh, except to say that to the members that we have um, 300 uh, students that are enrolled in diploma and, and degrees uh, for the financial year 20. 20, academic year 2020, and the colleges has also embarked on providing a qualification of a N NQF level two to four uh, with leadership in both plant and animal production across these level. Current 86 students are enrolled in various leaderships. Honorable Chair, with regard to We also wish to say that we are also embarking on ensuring that the, the livestock of our, our province are being given priority. I'm not going to go and dwell on that one, except to say that we are in line and all the, the systems we have put in place uh, are working and we are certain that uh, uh, the farmers that are farming and are, are, are growing animal and are involved in animal uh, production will benefit and will change the status quo for the better. Honorable Chair, we have a number of um, programs that I'm not going to allow, uh, allow uh, outline, but to, to outline the, uh, such as would we have a program, uh, yeah, veterinary services, we have a program, yeah, livestock infrastructure and livestock associations that we are working with, the establishment and rehabilitation of deep tanks that are, are, are working, we are working on the primary animal, Healthcare and CCS program, 
uh, the department that is working uh, with um, uh, the stakeholders. I want also to try and not to dwell much on the programs, as I have said, and the, the capping of diseases such as your foot and mouth diseases. Uh, we are busy with that. African armyworm and folly armyworm, we have been uh, involved and uh, we have been doing well uh, to protect our animal and our livestock in, the, in those diseases. Uh, we have also have our um, a livestock marketing and goats a master plan, which uh, we have presented, uh, we continue to, to, to implement. We have a uh, wool improvement projects that are there. Uh, Emalgamation of um, public entities, which I'm certain that the members are, are really are really waiting to, to say what is it that we are doing. Honorable members, while I acknowledge that the finalization of the task has been enormous and slow, I am happy to announce that we have received, we have recently made impre impressive strides in this regard. With effects from the 31st of March 2020, all three uh, department uh, entities are operating as a single entity under the Agri Business Development Agency. Other operational matters are, constant, are constantly being dealt with by the work streams on the various bases to ensure seamless, seamless operation and to advance the department's uh, commercial value chain mandate. Uh, with uh, our public entity, the Agribusiness uh, Development Agents, ADA, uh, we want also to say that they are doing a good work as we have tasked them to also look at uh, ensuring that the strategy for for turning around Umjindi uh, and also to turn around the Intingwe um, Tia State, all those uh, program uh, have been given to 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 add us so that uh, we are certain that uh, all the processes that we have I have talked about uh, above are dealt with. With that, um, uh, honourable um, uh, chair and and the members. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to dwell much on other areas of what we are doing. And as we are presenting this budget, we will go through the program and projects that are, are there. But it's safe to say that um, we want to, to say, we want to table this project, uh, this budget for this financial year 2021. Uh, Honorable Chair, person, and also the members, I'm here by the, uh, submitting the budget for 2021 uh, as follows, that um, Program one administration, we have put aside 658,444,000 rands. Uh, program two, we have put aside, which is agriculture development, we have put 1.8 billion, uh, 227 rands. And also program three, rural development, we have put 86 million and 86 um, uh, rands uh, for the vote. Uh, uh, three agricultural development, the entire budget is 2,548,157,000 rand as I'm presenting and tabling it before this um, August House. In conclusion, I wish uh, uh, in these turbulent times, honorable chairperson and members, we are reminded of the wise counsel of Helen uh, Keller, who reminds us that I quote and close quote and open quote, Although the world is full of uh, suffering, it is full. It is full also of overcoming of it. Our strength as a nation has seen us through the adverse adversity that we have overcome. We have strengthened our belief that nothing can lower our spirit to the point of no return. That our will to live and strive that has the power to defy any threat to our livelihood. The coronavirus has caused untold suffering in our country and beyond. However, it has not diminished our will and capacity to advance the goal of development for our nation. As we submit this budget vote, Chairperson, we do so with the unyielding conviction that we are a nation of winners. Even in these troubled times, our mandate has not changed. We are expected to ensure that there is sufficient nutrition, nutritious food for the healthy population. 
we will summon all our co co collective mighty to ensure that this objective is achieved. It is with this background in mind that we submit our requests for this budget allocation to support this service delivery program of the department and this province, uh, of this provincial government. Honorable Chair and members, I will allow me to thank my, my colleagues that I, I've worked with in the, in the legislature and also our, our colleagues in the, in the Executive Council for the support and the cooperation that we have been receiving as this department. Uh, the support that our Premier, Honorable Zigalala, has been giving us in, as this department and, and all the, the champion of district that they have been giving us. But also beyond that, I want to thank my, my team uh, from Department of Agriculture and Rural Development, led by HOT uh, Usibande, who has newly and then come uh, with an NAT, and uh, I've seen the NAT in the entire team. Thank you very much, uh, uh, guys, for the work well done. But lastly, I want to thank God for giving me this opportunity to head this department, and I'm certain that he will walk with me through this path and ensure that... Uh, we deliver the services, we change the life of our people. And lastly, to thank my husband for the love that he is showing and the support he is giving me, my kids and my family, and all the time that I serve outside there, they are always behind me and supporting me. I want to thank the stakeholders that have uh, given support also to this department. We are still saying that with all that uh, we are together and together, let us create our common future. And together, let us grow KwaZulu Natal. Hence, we are saying, hashtag Pesgom Kono, as the province of KwaZulu Natal, the department is willing to change the status quo and change it for the better. I thank you, Honorable Chair, and the members for giving the opportunity. Thank you, Honorable MSC. Uh, I, 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 will dump, I will come back and tell you how much time you have taken from your minutes. But let me report to the House that there are honorable members that have forfeited their slots. The first one is Honorable Lodger from NFP. He'll be attending to education. Honorable from ATM, Honorable Pagato from ATM uh, is not available for for debate. Also, Honorable Manmaile from SCDP will not be debating, attending to a funeral. In terms of all other people, all, all other members, that, Honorable members that are debating, I haven't received any apology or a problem that could be encountered. So I'm looking forward to, to a smooth running of this uh, visual sitting. I, I, I also want to remind honorable members to make use of the video so that their face does appear. When you are on when you are given an opportunity to debate, ensure that you, 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 your camera is on and also your mic is is unmuted. By that I think we'll be running our program very well, unlike previously. Let me call upon the chairperson of the portfolio, Honorable N.N. Spilda Sapeta, who's allocated 10 minutes to debate. After her, it will be Esther Blumsheng, who's Honorable Sapeta. You can start, ma'am. Honorable chairperson, honorable members, Ladies and gentlemen, Molweni, in his State of the Nation address earlier this year, His Excellency President Matamela Ramaphosa recalled the words of Tata Mandela on the day of his release from Victor Fester prison in Pal, when he said, and I quote, our march to freedom is irreversible. We must not allow fear to stand in our way. As I present this report on behalf of the Portfolio Committee on Agriculture and Rural Development, I am cognizant of the fact that many of our people are terrified of the impact the coronavirus might have 
on their lives and the future of their children. The lack of information about this new virus makes it difficult for governments and communities alike to make predictions and provide clear and easily acceptable responses to the outbreak. Nakuba Gunjalo Slalo, Siabonga, Ubuholi, Obkoto, Obukonjo Sengu Monga Meluezo, Ganyan, a cabinet yake, a Gulusan and an Alupuban, Uholo Labo Alubonwa, Yitikupela, Otwangishon, and Langano Yazizwe, Yamazo Umslaba, a World Health Organization. He has a normal zonke is in Tello in Ingism Africa, and as of Vigela is in Pillows Aban to Babulin. Yinga Gongitinam, Nakuso is his cartes began in Naso. Masua Kumbulela Mazukata Umandela, La Po Ati, Singa Vumeli, Uwe Saba, Kume and Leleni, to Eya and Kulule Gweni, Epelel. Jenga Zonga Zinya is in King Askesa Sanga Beza and Nazonga Pambilini, Nayole Covid, Sizoi Noba, Uman Jesbam Bissene, Senza Gonga, Lokok Fanele Sequenze, Gamunye, Gamunye, Gwindao, La Posisala, Corn. Lelituane Lisifi. Kabi Sishalo. Isimo Somnoto Wezwe Singa Mile Kase Kanye Na Tila Kulolushelo Lwakwa Agriculture Sine Zinkinga Eziningi Ezi Kungete Umkaka Lo Wakwa Agriculture. Kotwa Kesia Temba Ukuti Ngale Crisis as we try as a nation to respond to this crisis, new ideas will emerge. The committee scrutinized the APP and budget of the department and its entities using the tools of the public sector oversight model. The first draft of the APP and budget was presented to the committee on the 7th of December 2019. The committee had subsequent engagements with four districts, namely Uku, Herikwala, Umkungundlovu, and Utukela on their district plans. The final draft of the department, APP, and the budget was tabled on the 21st of April 2020. After deliberations, the committee resolved to accept the budget and the APP. This report therefore provides an account of the committee's engagement with the department and its public entities when considering the department's budget and APP. The budget of the department is detailed under vote three of the estimates of provincial revenue and expenditure 2020-2021 as tabled by the MEC of Finance on the 6th of March 2020. It should be noted, uh, Honorable Chairperson, that in this EPRE, that two entities of the department, Umchindi and ADA, were rationalized into one entity namely ADA. This was done in anticipation of finalizing the rationalization on enti of entities, and this process was eventually concluded on the 31st of March, as MEC has uh, reported in her presentation earlier on. The APPs of the department and ADA are aligned to all national and provincial priorities of the sixth administration. The Department of Agriculture and Rural Development has been allocated a total budget of 2.548 billion for the 2020-21 financial year. The budget has been allocated to the three main departmental programs as highlighted by the MEC in her presentation. I won't go through that. Program two, Honorable uh, Chairperson, uh, is cut uh, by a total amount of 181 million between the 2019 and 2021 financial years due to the fiscal consolidation and updates made to the provincial equitable share formula. These cuts were the result of low spending on the compensation of employees and events over the years. Program three will see an aggregate increase of 60.225 million from 25 million uh, in 2019-2020 to 86.086 uh, million in 2020-2021, largely due to reprioritized funds from program 
to. The committee applauds this increase, uh, Honorable Chair, because we believe that uh, this uh, program has a role in addressing challenges faced by communities uh, in, uh, in, 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 rural, uh, in rural areas. Agribusiness will receive uh, in this financial year an amount uh, of 194 million as presented by the MEC and the department also makes uh, transfers to various uh, institutions or, and organizations in KwaZulu Natal. Uh, we have observed, uh, Honorable uh, Chairperson, a number of reductions, especially that concerns uh, the portfolio committee uh, in the budget of the department. Those that include, uh, uh, those will include conditional grants, Igakulukazi, the CASP grants. The CASP redu reductions will have a negative impact on the province's contribution to the 1 million jobs by 2030. We also observed that by the time when we're engaging with the department on this budget, the department had not quantified the impact of COVID-19 on the budget of the department. However, the department was advised by the provincial treasury to create a COVID-19 line budget item, which they used to manufacture sanitizers and procure PPEs. The committee will follow up on this issue to see if these funds were utilized uh, for this purpose. We are therefore, uh, Honorable Chairperson, uh, recommending that the MEC, the MEC in the next uh, three months reports to the House on progress regarding the alignment of the provincial department and the national department. We believe that this will assist the province in developing a clear approach in dealing with land-related matters, as we have received a number of complaints by beneficiaries in KwaZulu-Natal about how the land matters have been dealt with by the national department. The alignment of these two departments will indeed assist us in playing our oversight role. The MEC must also ensure that the department develops a reliable electronic database and monitoring tool for the province so that we know which farmers are supported by the department at what capacity level, where are they now, how have they been supported, for how long, and how are they performing in terms of their development in the market. The MEC must also develop a clear partnership with the National Department of Agriculture, Land and Rural Development to rescue the irrigation schemes funded by National Department as these have a potential of creating more jobs and reducing poverty in the province of KwaZulu-Natal. Here we are talking about schemes like those in Tugela Ferry and others in other areas. The department must also fast track its plans to refocus its research units, as the MEC has mentioned in the presentation, uh, to fast track uh, its research units or centers to respond to the challenges of climate change that will benefit the broader population of the province. The department must also develop a clear plan to link farmers to domestic and international markets. Our farmers are complaining that as much as the department is assisting them with input cost, the problem is that they are unable to access markets which means that whatever the department is investing in these farmers, at the end of the day, it becomes a wasteful expenditure, a, a honorable chairperson. Whilst the committee is cognizant of the fiscal challenges facing the country, honorable chairperson, and the province, the committee recommends that the department must, within the next three months, finalize the review of the current provincial strategy 
and implementation plan and report to the House by no later than October 2020. Honorable Chairperson, we also uh, observed that the provincial government continues to allocate less resources to agricultural activities in the province. Currently, the Department of Agriculture is given 1.8% of the total budget of the province, which is far, far less from the 10% that the AU is requiring our governments to allocate to agriculture. We are requesting the Honorable Premier to relook at this matter and try by all means to work around ensuring that uh, we increase the resources to this sector, as we all believe that agriculture uh, can address the challenges that are facing our communities currently, poverty and unemployment. Voting on the budget and APP, Honorable Chairperson, went in this manner. ANC supported, IFP supported, DA reserved their right, minority parties supported the budget of the department. I thank you. Thank you, Honorable Honorable. Member. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, as I indicated after the report of the committee by the Chairperson, we are going to call to the visual meeting a presentation from the ANC. Honorable S.W. Mshengu to speak for 12 minutes. After Honorable Mshengu, we will have the IFP Ilunga. Thank you. Proceed, Mshengu. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson, Honorable Premier, uh, Honorable Member of the Executive Council, uh, MSC Bongis Tolemnoi, members of the legislature, officials, of the department and our entities, guests on this visual platform, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. The current COVID-19 pandemic has redefined how human race should interact and socialize as a, is a stark reminder of the need to accelerate equitable access to land and our natural resources like water in order to ensure that our people graciously succumb to this new normal with dignity. When the state of disaster was announced and the lockdown regulations imposed, the true picture and the accurate face of poverty was revealed. When our people stood in scorching heat, waiting for handout of food parcels, it was an intervention of a caring government, but it cannot be sustained as it is not affordable nor desirable. Honorable Chairperson, I can speak with confidence that sustainable agriculture, agriculture and food security for all is possible in our country. The province of KwaZulu Natal remains a bedrock for agricultural products like sugar cane, maize, beans, as well as fruits and vegetables. Our in innovation in establishing Dube AgriZone as an eco friendly facility to offset environmental impacts like drought and power supply as it uses rain harvesting and solar energy in order to ensure consistent availability of products and supply to the market. The planting of indigenous plants for herbs medicines or for herbal medicines and other use remains an envy of the world as traditional African products creates numerous economic opportunities that goes unrecorded. In the year 2019, Honorable Chairperson, the MSC for Agriculture visited a women-only owned enterprise next to Inaladenum Zinyati area in Etewini Metro. They were planting vegetables for the local markets, and their quest or rather their request was to be assisted with pest control and fencing of their gardens as livestock would now and again encroach and destroy their plants. It is the rural women and youth across the length and breadth of our beautiful province who must be trusted and supported with resources in order to revive and grow our everlasting wealth. 
with land at our disposal, or rather with land at our disposal, we can replicate what Tukela Ferry Irrigation Scheme is producing. This is one flagship project that almost all members of the village have an interest in as it produces and feed families. The research capacity of the department must begin to be outward looking and identify new hubs where soil is supportive of plowing certain products that may have significant impact in the lives of our people where they live. Honorable Chair, the department has had adverse audit report for several years in succession. Irrespective of the narrative and explanations given, this must stop. We have professionals who are reasonably remunerated for being trusted with the resources of the people. As members of the legislature, we want to employ the new HOD together with your management team, sir. Use the resources, the resources of the people expeditiously. Should it happen that the cancer of unsavory financial behavior continues, we shall not stand on the sidelines, but we will demand accountability and consequences. The Industrial Policy Action Plan is the nucleus of the new growth path, which demands or places employment at the center of economic growth through focus on value-adding sectors that embodies growth multipliers. The National Development Plan, Vision 2030, places agro-processing at the core of South and Southern African region, growth trajectory and prosperity. The domestic market represents an attractive prospect for agro processing for our province. Given our competitive edge in a whole range variety of products, the export market can be our playground, thus increase for a direct revenue. Honorable Chairperson, we support the new and researched youth directorate in the department, and we wish it does not just become another coordinating wing, but must be empowered and capacitated financially to undertake initiatives that will respond to the plight of young people. I am concerned, though, that the opportunity of plowing of cannabis in Tango has been hijacked by the established commercial entities. This new unit must advocate for the end mass participation of youth in this venture, given its potential to change their circumstances, working together with our licensing department like ETIA. Our country's chairmanship of the African Union, led by His Excellency President Ramaphosa, is based on the theme silencing the guns. And this can only be realized when no African goes to bed on an empty stomach. Our province's border line with Mozambique poses a threat of food production, security, and well-being of our citizens as long as their internal feud remains unresolved. And we hope and pray that the part of our province that is near to Mozambique remains well safeguarded by our security establishment. The impact statement of the Department of Agriculture year 2020 to year 2025 reads as follows. To increase household food security, agricultural growth, and inclusive rural development. In order to realize this noble objective, the department must enter into a new contract with the citizens of our province. One, the department must support the land reform beneficiaries as the NDP and joins it to do so through training and other initiatives that will sustain their livelihoods. Our honorable chairperson of the portfolio committee has actually went into town explaining this point. Number two, support the large-scale and smallholder producers in organizing the smallholder producers into smallholder commodity-based organizations for increased bargaining power and access to finance. Raising the profile of Ilima Letema that is aimed at supporting sustainable agriculture and rural development for smallholder producers, learn care to address land degradation problems and promote sustainable use of natural resources. To facilitate easy access to institutions like land, like land bank and other financial houses when farmers want to expand and increase their operations. Investigate possibilities of forging partnership with insurance companies in order to mitigate against excessive losses 
um, especially when emerging farmers' um, uh, livestock are stolen or killed by epidemics. The livestock farming is gaining a lot of traction, in particular from youth in the previously marginalized communities. In the coming years, Honorable Chairperson, we should rekindle our relationship with the Department of Basic Education in exploring the possibility of returning agriculture from the primary garden grades at an early stage. This must not be executed like in the past minority government where agriculture was used as a punishment, especially for the black child. Agriculture is a subject of all seasons. Honorable Chairperson, the master plan for commercialization of the goat, of the goat meat must be accelerated as the production of this animal remains the symbol of resistance and heritage for our rural black communities. There are traditional rituals that are observed through the goat, and their prices from the commercial markets of late are no longer affordable, especially to the poor during the difficult times of grief. Here our economy is under immense pressure, Honorable Chairperson. Rating agencies have downgraded our country to below investment grade. Our situation has been further compounded by the coronavirus that continues to pose untold fear and uncertainty amongst our people. We remain hopeful that with the courage of our leadership and resilience of our people, though our competitiveness in agriculture is being eroded by high and ever-rising input cost and crime in particular stock theft, we, we shall emerge victorious. Having said it all, Chairperson, we are undeterred that building a united and unracial and prosperous society remains our lifetime commitment. The African National Congress supports the budget vote. Thank you, Honorable Member. Uh, we are going to have the IFP, as I indicated, Honorable PM Simango will be speaking for 15 minutes after Honorable Simango, ETA, Honorable J CJ Papas must get ready so that the singer motion is catch. But apart from that, let me also declare the MSA request to use her minutes. She used about 10 minutes, so she'd be left with 10 minutes to respond. Hence, she has 20 minutes in total for her to respond. Then you can proceed. Uh, you can start, Honorable Member. We are towards a call of Salom Bubinga Lele and Nagano MSC Naba Hulibonga Abacona Lap. Nam Sanje. Sitepeta Lenkulumo La IFP Iketa Kona Imiaga and Amashumi Aman and Antan forty five years ya Sumula Musumulayo Mutano Pindangene Neskati is Simosins in my South Africa in China Zong Gazas on Bosazo Zivalue im Lom Um Isholo Utepu by South Africa Mutano Pindangene was only down IFP Eama Eskalin Ugubi was from the Saga Guba Abandu bafundi se uzaka no kuzenze la first step self reliance ngakho ke ushaye ngesemethulela unwele lude futhi lo nyaka nje nga IFP sanqoma ukuthi unyaka so unikela kuye chairperson 
The IFP supported a budget allocation of 2.548 billion for the Department of Agriculture and Red Development. As the IFP, we cannot shy away from the fact that this department is a shameless and it is a disaster. This was indication during a SCOPA and subsequently portfolio committee meeting with the department where the officials of this department had no plan on how they were going to turn around the areas of concern from the Auditor General audit report because for three conservative years, this department has received a poor audit outcomes. They present to us unconvincingly resolution that said nothing and we were forced to send them back to the drawing board. It seemed to us that officials of this de department do not take their jobs seriously and treat the legislature committee like a tick box exercise. The audit funding of this department revealed irregular expenditure of 715 million by the, de by the, de the department, well as 118 million unaccounted by the ent entities like Ada and Mjing. The officials of this department were expected to present a turnaround strategy on how they will be fixed the disadvantage, the this vasting mess in this department, which include the following: poor response to addressing prior years' audit findings, a lack of strategy planning and poor internal controls, system not in place to monitor progress toward achieving targets, underspending of 264 million, underspending conditional grant by the by 40.75 million rand by the other fruitless and wasteful expenditure of 70,000 uncounted uncountable debt by the MGND of 6 million rand and the non-compliance with the legislation in procurement processes chairperson this department is dysfunctionally and if the Honorable MSC and the SOD fails to weed out corruption in this, de this department, nothing good will come out from this budget. Officials will continue to be paid for nothing. Consequence cons management and S SCM processes are footed, and we are concerned that this budget will be misused and there will be nothing to show if it, it happens again. The, de the department is the need of strong capability and capability uh, leadership to dismantle the mafia that is holding the department back in fulfilling its mandate effectively. To prove that there is a rot in this department, let me remind you, MSC, about the corruption that happened in your department, department and which no one has been held accountable till today for it. A, for, a forensic investigation was launched into how this department squandered more than 200 million of drought relief fund, which was re, re, reserved for substance farmers startling smallholders after the province was declared as a disaster area following a, a, a creeping drought in 2015, farmers were meant to use funds for water harvesting, scooping off dams, rehabilitation of boreholes and, pro, and provision of stock feed. The report into this investigation has not been released to the public. Another forensic report commissioned by the former agriculture MSC, Michel Kadebe, after 60 million rand of taxpayers' money uh, meant to assist emerging farmers in these rural areas around the province had not been accounted for. In, to, in, in 2012, this investigation, which costed 10 million rand, was complete, completed in February 2014, but has not been released to the public. We are extremely concerned that it delays up to the, 
depolarization under unreasonable, and we, we condemn this lack of progress. The delay in this identifying the perpetrators and the mastermind behind the alleged corruption activities, activities is undermining the public trust in the department in this department. We demand a proper, fair, and time-bound investigation in this province. Justice delay is a justice denied. Monoshe, banga gabanto sebe boshi ngalengwa shale guzo gube manje. Lembigo yengwa shagalo itetelwa ni nempagati ni ngoba bantu abazona izule ba ya zugu tu gwenza gala nifutu. Aguk aze guboshe muntu. Chekalage monoshe usine gusugu olikondile lulu uguti babosha nini lababandu. Oramana MC, we urge you to ensure that this department achieve a clean audit. The IFP is concerned about the, the, the culture of underspending in this department. Many projects since 2016-2017 financial year and for 2020, the department underspend by 167.86 million in the last three years. It has, it has underspend spend it by almost a billion uh, rand. Furthermore, it is deeply troubling to us as an IFP that the deployment conditional grant were cut by 12.657 million over the MTEF. We however note the 297.27 million allocated for, for conditional grant. However, the budget cut to the conditional grant that will be have an impact on the fu funding of agriculture on farm structures, in aggregation shame, seed, etc. at the household and smallholder level are a proper problem to us as this means trouble and poverty of emerging farmers in rural areas. Rural areas. We also note the amount of 200 and 6.4 million for comprehensive, comprehensive agriculture support program grant. We, we call upon the MSC to ensure that the tendency by this department to fail to spend grant fund fully comes to an end. In 2020, 2018, this department failed to spend a million of rand in grant meant to develop farming in the rural areas. The failure to spend the money always tantamount to treason. Action must be taken against anyone who failed to ensure that all funds of the development are spent accordingly. Chairperson, we commend the department for prioritizing the filling of vacancies post and allocating 90 2.47 million for filling of vacancies. We have seen many advertisement posts in the last few months. We therefore welcome the allocation of um, uh, 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 1.246 million to cater for planning filling of 194 critical posts. As, we, as well as the increasing by the 144 in the number of UAGYP graduates during the 2021 MTEF, the filling of vacant posts must be fast track as, the, as this has negative in, in, in effect of the functionality of the development. The agriculture sector is a critical for the economic development of the rural areas and the country as a whole. Therefore, our programs of rural development and land reform and training reform must be integrated into a clear strategy that seeks to empower the poor, higher food price impact negative on the purchasing power of the poorest in the poor in our province. This 
it is important that this budget should also speak to the providing solution to caution the poor on short-term intervention measures should in ensure that they provide a safety net for the poor. Having said that, the disparity that still exists within our country, especially between the urban and the rural areas after almost more than 20 years of democracy and struggling, the development of the rural areas are not taking place at a fast enough pace. And people who live in these areas are still um, pleaded by the extreme poverty and the lack of food security. This is an, an, an acceptable, acceptable situation and the Department, the, the Department of Agriculture and Land Reform must do more to correct the situation and afford the rural areas the required attention. Funding and uh, expertise, and they need to escape the cycle of poverty in which they are trapped, trapped. The development initi initiative and programs aimed at achieving real development must be re-examined and if need be modified or changed in order to speed up the pace of development in the real areas. We sub supported the, the initiative by the department to develop a plan to produce its own seed and selling it. In support of the researcher, we urge the Honorable MS2 to, to ensure that Black-owned businesses, in particular, the youth, women, and people with disabilities, especially in the rural areas, are benefited fully in these programs. The IFP is concerned that the department is, seems to be failing to do more to empower people with, with disability. It is shocking that the, the Honorable um, MSC does not even speak about how many disabled people are, are employed by the department and how many are going to be employed in this current financial year. We don't hear the MSC speak about projects, especially of disabled people, disabled people. If I may ask from the MSC, how many farmers in Guazul Natal are owned by dis disabled people only? Why this, di this department exclude dis disabled people from the participating in the agriculture. Disabled people must be given land to farm. They must be provided with skills, finance, market, and equipped. We want to see disabled people become commercial farmers and contribute in the economy. We commend also the MSC for providing feedback on the what progress has been made in this program. As an IFP, in the past, we have called for a farm audit owned by the youth to the conduct in, the, in, in order for them to be support, supported. The IFP say people who own farms must be provided with skills, market, financial assistance, and equipped without necessarily supported. Um, they will not be able to farm. They must be assisted to keep their farm productive. Yeah, we left they a few minutes. By the uh, state uh, of uh, Sorry? Minutes left. Um, to, to conclude, uh, look, uh, um, Tlalo, when you have 2017, you have to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, Thank you. Uh, MEC, you refer to MEC in term, former. In term, yes. Yes, uh, it's, it's noted. Thank you. I'm going to answer my mobile ask you to take the number. Yeah, but. Sir. Uh, I, I, I said before, Kukulume, who in Tunisia, Umsimango, it the A was to be the one that is going to take over. I'm allowing you, Honorable. Purpose to commence with your debate. 
Thank you. You have eight minutes. I'm starting now. Uh, I also take the opportunity to thank all of those involved in the agricultural sector who have really worked hard during these uncertain and difficult times, especially our farmers, farm workers, transporters, market operators, agri-processing workers, and all of those who have ensured that food remains on our tables. A special thank you to all the farmers who have stepped up to the plate to assist thousands of KwaZulu Natal citizens with the donation of food responsibility that the farmers have shouldered despite years of abuse and neglect by this government. Chairperson, at my first budget of the Department of Agriculture, I accepted the department's budget with the hope that the new MEC would be bold, strong and decisive in turning the department around, despite her notorious history involving her husband and tenders. I'd hoped that the new MEC would revise the policy direction of the department and scrap plans and interventions that have been failing for a number of years. Not only this, but there was a great expectation that the MEC would take a radical action against a department captured by an internal mafia. However, it is clear that the MEC does not have what it takes to make tough decisions, but is instead coasting her way through a five-year term, unaware of the critical role that the department can play in changing the lives of the citizens of this province, more especially black citizens in our rural areas. But we are not here to talk about the MEC, Chairperson. We are here to talk about the commitments that the KwaZulu-Natal government is making towards agriculture, uh, articulated through this budget. Chairperson, before I continue on the substantive part of my address, uh, I'd like to just acknowledge and thank the committee chairperson, Honorable Sapita Sapeta, for her leadership, take, uh, leadership since taking office. Our chairperson has fairly executed her duties, and I hope this continues. I would also like to acknowledge the work that it was done and has been done by our HOD and CFO. Although they are not agriculturalists, there, there is some progress being made. This despite the obvious lack of political willpower and innovation from both the Premier and the MEC. Chairperson, a budget can be a, de a deceiving document if you do not look at it historically and in terms of its intricate details. So please allow me to unpack this further. From the outset, there is a disjuncture between the vision and the mission of the department and the interventions carried out by the department. While the department says one thing, its spending patterns, annual performance plans and interventions show a different reality. The vision of the department is an inclusive, sustainable, and radically transformed agricultural sector that builds thriving communities in balance with nature, while the mission of the department is to advance sound agricultural practices that stimulate comprehensive economic growth, food security, and advancement of rural communities. However, the department, by its own accounts of its performance, indicates that its strategic direction is biased towards subsistence and household-level interventions. While there is undoubtedly a need for government to work in rural communities to alleviate hunger and food insecurity, much of which has its roots in an, our unjust historic disp uh, dispossession and settlement patterns, this role should fall on the shoulders of the Department of Social Development and the Department of Health. The Department of Agriculture, as a member of the Economic Transformation Cluster, should be focused on the promotion of optimal agricultural production for improved economic development and job creation, the promotion of natural resource conservation for improved agricultural production and improved access to services in rural areas through coordination. And these are not my words. These are the words uh, are the own words of the department articulated in their strategic objectives. However, the reality on the ground is completely different to what we see on paper. Incomplete projects, dilapidated departmental offices, outdated farming practices, bloated and unskilled staffing components and the lack of real progress in transforming lives. Here are some examples, Chairperson. The Department of Agriculture has spent more than 524,600,000 rand supporting agricultural developments for land reform farms since 2010. This, to this is a total of 544 farms or 13,500 beneficiaries. The Department has also purchased 834 farms for agrarian land reform programs at a cost of 6.7 billion rand. Of all these farms, 1,283 have been assessed by the department, where 55% of them have become less productive. In simple, simple terms, Chairperson, more than half of the farms purchased to ensure that the agricultural and property ownership patterns of KwaZulu-Natal are transformed are no longer operating in a way that financially or materially benefits the new owners, black owners, who deserve much more considering the historic imbalances of our past. Secondly, the department owns 329 tractors. Of these, 37% of them are not operational, and only 400,000 rand in the last budget was allocated to repair them. 
are we getting our priorities right? Since 2012, the department has, assigned 48, has assisted 48,888 farmers. Of these farmers, only 26% of them are operating with no or limited support from the department. The remaining 74% are still wholly reliant on government. This begs the question, what expertise are our officials dispensing if the success rate is only 26%? More importantly, what are the management and successive ANC MECs doing about the 74% failure rate of the interventions aimed at assisting black farmers? Or is it that under the ANC, black lives don't matter, just like they failed to acknowledge the horrific death of Collins Corsan? Causa, sorry. Four. How do we expect our officials to work when 37 properties operated by the Department of Agriculture are vandalized or severely vandalized? Not only are we failing to deliver to the people, but we are failing our own staff members. Five, 170.5 million rand has been spent on the Ntingwe tea estate, which currently lies unused and unusable. The immediate response by the ANC-led government is to pump more money into this entity, as if they have not learned from SAA, ESCOM, Denal, Prasa, the Frieda Dairy Farm, just to mention a few. Instead of finding partners who have the expertise and skills to get the job done, the ANC st strategy is to throw more money at the problem. This is one example of projects where the government thought they were experts in running a business. Agri-Parks is another one, and there are many more others if you drive around KZN that have not taken off. Six, with the inevitable decline in budgets due to the ANC COVID-19 economic crisis and the pre-COVID economic downturn due to poor policy decisions and ANC-driven uncertainty, the department will have to do more with less. This will be difficult for a department that already spends more than 50% of its budget on salaries and wages. This is quite ironic for a department that always complains about the lack of capacity. Simply put, it means we will continue to pay huge salaries and wages while there's less to spend on the people of KwaZulu-Natal, thus sealing the fate of many rural people for decades to come. When we really unpack the current and historic interventions by the ANC-led government, it becomes clear that there is a pattern of creating dependency on the state. I'm sure the IFP and many others will agree with me on this one. But where there is an ANC government, they subjugate the citizens and control the people through unfair distribution of resources that create dependency, with little or no real changes to the long-term prospects of self-sufficiency or economic freedom. When confronted about the issue, and I'm answering Honorable Duma before he even speaks, when confronted about the issue, they'll immediately turn to blame apartheid or colonialism for their current failures. This is despite the clear evidence articulated in the speech that indicates that the current problems or failures to overcome historic injustices are not the, the product of a pre-ANC government. Rather, the failure is to transform the lives of rural black citizens, to create black agricultural class, to create self-sufficient black farmers, and to grow and support the agricultural sector as a whole, must be blamed on failed policies, including RASET, cater deployment, BEE all grounded in the Soviet-era National Democratic Revolution. No matter how many times you blame for Wurt or complain about Jan van Riebeck, or you try to blame the IFP early years of government, the yeah, lives of the people of Brazilian Natal will not change until you realize that your approach to building an inclusive economy is that fundamentally is flawed, lament. including this budget and the underlying strategies contained in it. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Member Papas. Uh, I would like to call upon the ANC, ANC Honourable Member MC Fraser to speak on behalf of the ANC for 10 minutes. Over to you, Madam. Thank you, Honourable Chair, Honourable Speaker, Honourable Premier and the Executive, Honourable Members, I greet you all. Chepesin, we are meeting at the lowest moment as South Africans, where we are fighting for survival. These are trying times, as we are currently faced by the killer pandemic called COVID-19. It is so unfortunate that, as the ANC, we have been working tirelessly in building the South Africa that is classless. However, the pandemic has proved to us that, indeed, we still have a long road to travel in order to ensure that all South Africans are equal. In addition, uh, Honorable Chair, we are also being finished by this shadow pandemic called gender-based violence and femicide. Chairperson, we woke up today to the devastating news of two uh, female nurses 
who were victims of the gender-based violence in Herikwal. And the third one is busy fighting for her life in hospitals as we speak. Chairperson, on the other, meanwhile, on the other side of the world, in the USA, our black brothers and sisters are currently fighting against the brutal killings by the police while also being affected by COVID-19. As the ANC, we will continue to show support, fight for any form of injustice, and continue to be on the forefront of any struggle that affects our people. In doing so, we shall continue working hard to achieve our vision of a non-racial, non-sexist, and prosperous South Africa. Chaperson, I've been mandated by the Glorious Movement to look at the impact of two degrees concept in relation to cases and agricultural environment. I would therefore like us to visit some of the facts around this subject of climate change and its impact for Wazulu Natal agriculture. It appears, Chaperson, that the DA and its allies were lazy in conducting the research, which resulted in their highest criticism of the Department of Agriculture without a full understanding of some of the issues currently facing the agricultural sector. It is therefore critical that we first school them on what is happening in KZN as far as uh, climate change is concerned, specifically taking a closer look at some of the negative impacts and the serious threat to this challenge poses on this sector. Chaperson, KZN is currently ranked the highest province that is most vulnerable to climate change and the third lowest in adaptive capacity. This unfortunately has a severe impact on food security in the province. Farmers are experiencing difficulties adapting to complex and often unpredictable climate conditions. This will result, will result to serious consequences in destabilizing the food systems, especially for the poor and marginalized sector of the population. According to recent research in KZN, there's been an increase of one degree Celsius in temperature over the past 50 years as well as warmer winters with delayed frost. This increase is further projected to be between 2 and 5 degrees Celsius in 10 years. Now, the increase in temperature will inevitably have a negative impact on plant growth rates and animal growth, thus affecting food supply. With crops now being exposed to higher temperatures, this causes a damage to these crops while growth is halted. We have also seen how the threat of changing rainfall season plays havoc with planting dates and crops and management. Another fact worth noting, Chaperson, is that KZN has had the same amount of rain unlike most uh, provinces. However, we are being told that the number of rainy days are fewer within higher chances of a uh, damaging a uh, storm, which results in floods, building up of dams, loss of infrastructure. And for the purpose of our discussion today, more importantly, Chaperson, loss of crop. Now, this we have witnessed in the past few months. Some climate change impacts also worth noting includes heat stress on animal productivity, overall decrease in food supply, which will lead to increase in food, in food prices. Increase in water-related health risk and cleanliness of food. Increase in food aid, increase in food imports, and overall decrease in food stability. In view of the above, Chaperson, it is clear that the ANC-led department under the stewardship of Honorable Sole Moloi and her team is faced with an extremely difficult task in tackling these challenges 
and ensuring that food stability does not decrease in the province. So as born as in King and Payen and Nazo, Porto Essic Jablera Kulu, Ubusi Umas Toll, and Etim Balake, Bayakuba is the Wunja, Lucia Bona in Pumes. In an effort to ensure that there is food stability and that food production increases, a climate smart approach is required. In tackling this complex challenge, the department is in constant communication with the farmers, extension and agricultural organizations to keep abreast of the latest development. We have also noted, Chairperson, that there are strides in creating awareness about climate information, information so that seasonal climate forecasts can be used and be applied. The ANC-led department further raises awareness and provides widespread training to farmers and communities on how to farm sustainably using modern techniques. Si ababona be puma benge na abali mu be fundisa na abali mu abase bangani uguti bangai peyaranjani lenzelele kon si abonga imnyanguin. We also commend the. MEC and her team on their extensive drive to educate farmers and communities to use water more efficiently. As we are all aware that we are currently faced with a serious uh, threat of drought. Earlier, a uh, chairperson, I briefly touched on the serious threat of crops being damaged due, due to high temperatures and heavy rain. It is therefore pleasing to learn that the department supports and advocates for farmers to diversify by growing a variety of crops and that farmers should reassess marginal drought sensitive crops to more appropriate ones. Lastly, Chairperson, land planning acknowledges that different areas of the province need different uh, management practices. While we are on the subject, uh, Chairperson, stealing land from original owners is a sin that will never be forgotten and continues to cut deep. It is a shame that more than 70% of the country's arable land is in the hands of the minority, who accounts for fewer than 10% of the population. Majority of our black people are still without land and therefore unable to farm while some are confined in small gardens. That is why, Chairperson, as the ANC, we are still committed to relieve this disparity. We are advocating for expropriation of land without compensation. And we are not apologetic about that. Oh, how I wish, Honorable Chair, we could all read Henny van Fieren's book titled Apartheid, Guns and Money, giving us a clear picture of the stunningly orchestrated corruption by the apartheid government. In addition to their stealing of land, I quote, we will never forget the names of those who died for freedom. Equally, we will never forget the names of perpetrators of these crimes, unquote. As we conclude the chairperson, we are greatly inspired by the voice of our president, his excellent president, Ramaphosa in one of the church gatherings where he was singing an old song by Peter Seeger. Uh, I quote the song, we shall overcome and we'll, uh, we shall overcome and we achieve the ANC's vision of the classless society. We support the budget. I thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you so Thank much, Honorable so Member. Uh, right on time, we just uh, we just made it within your time, the time that was allocated to you. Thank you for that. Uh, we are calling to the four EFF Honorable S. H. M. Chwechwa to to take a podium for nine minutes. 
Eighth on behalf of the EFF. No, thank you very much, Chairperson. Giving a little book about Shunishwa. Nibong a two winning Negazalon, the Telu Velen Sale or Tabin. The Department of Agriculture and Rural Development continues to bask in unregulated failure with extension of provincial budgets. Now sitting just above the margin of 2.6 billion. In 2018, the MEC committed to focusing on providing support to food insecure communities and subsistence and household. and household food production level, making pledges to provide support to commercial farmers with the aim of providing agricultural production, as well as focusing on the development of rural communities through agri-villages and erotically attempts at a coordination rural development. This has been noting short of empty rhetoric with a sudden deficit of food and nutrition security programs to add to their list of failures, even with millions have been injected into this edivore. The entire department should be ashamed of its inability to advise credible intervention in the sector. The lack, of the lack of prioritization of infrastructure for agricultural projects such as a schemes two years later speak to Barriers for of politically will to radically transform agriculture and ultimately role of economic freedom for our people. Substance. The Office of Agriculture and Rural Development is pledged by office bearers who have a net auditing scandals, who have made the sector into a clumsy tender premiers seekers. and the strategic programs with decisive exclusively out expertise and support for to date there has been no material increase in productivity for black commercial farmers and there has been little to support for movements to up the ladder of a white controlled and more polarized agri-economy sector. As an, an organization, we will never seek to politicize crisis and it is why we have not reduced our superior logic to the level of politicizing COVID-19. But we must use crisis to scrutinize and judge those entrusted with governance. The silence of the department in restructuring the budget to assist farmers and the agriculture sector to address the impact of the virus and the entire economy of agribusiness leaves a bitter after taste of inadequacy and poverty of logic. 
the, in, the inability of the department to respond to the crisis born by lockdown regulations and the pandemic could and will affect food prices. With a foreknowledge of the catastrophic repercussions of a delay in maize harvest, among other production, margin comp compromises, a lack of guided regulation and subsidy direction by the department is nothing short of underwhelming and must be challenged harshly. It is not just the oversight committee that is failing. It is the entire ANC in empty leadership that has been parachuted into such a critical economic hub. The budget will never revitalize agriculture and pro-processing as long as it is the hands of senseless ministers who do not understand the task of this ministry to expose and undo the racist art of apartheid and the made segment of the economy inclusive and the materially stolen land, monopolize agriculture and exploited our people. Agriculture still rates of combating ignorance and lack of direction. The Department of Agriculture Land Reform and Rural Development development has always failed to understand the mammoth task of land reform and rural development, particularly in a province that is so heavily ridiculed with social economic inequality and disparity of development for the poor. This is why the EFF is be the only solution to equipable governance and transform of the economy. There has been very insignificant work towards rural development and intolerable abomination by quads who have been no value in providing dignity to the population of KwaZulu Natal. The budget for rural development has been misused and misappropriated by a ruling elected that channels funds that must be used to advance development in rural cases and by pursuant of public servants. The finance elastic lifestyle at the expense of the needy. More, accountabil more accountability is needed over money channels into the scandals department and more radical policies must be introduced to support and speed up inclusivity of the agri economy chapisin namalunga onke parliament ahlon pekile zikhona zonke nama ekhona onke lama challenges as a eff siya a supporter a budget kodwa siyachizelela ukuthi awenzi umsebenzi kahulumeni Wabukulu bunono, nangin tonipo, nok tonipa banta basketile, gebonga chepesin. Thank you, honorable member. Uh, you managed the time well. Uh, we are calling upon honorable F. Thakur Rajpansi <laughs> for three minutes. Thanks, Honorable Chair. The Minority Front thanks the hardworking Honorable MEC, Chairperson and HOD of Agriculture. My concerns are with respect to seasonal seed procurement, number of vets to carry out essential veterinary services, boreholes and dam infrastructure and land care. Notwithstanding the climate change and COVID-19 impact with this labor and movement intensive department, especially with vulnerable communities. The Department of Agriculture is underperforming in these key areas and has reduced current targets with budget cuts. Yet agricultural prosperity creates hope for food security and poverty reduction for our growing population. Land degradation is a global problem and challenge to sustaining biological, economic and social services and ecosystems worsened by desertification. Hence land grant 
a care grant reduction from 15.1 to 12.7 million is regrettable. Honorable MEC, there are six barriers associated with sustainable land management, SLM, namely lack of data, low capacities and awareness for SLM, insufficient sectoral coordination and inadequate policies, governance challenges on communal land and natural resources, weak land tenure, uncertain roles, rights and responsibilities, structural and institutional challenges to access finance and markets. The 2019 Global Environment Facility Project in Limpopo and Northern Cape findings can easily be generalized to KwaZulu-Natal. Given the department's continuous underspending of the CASP and Lima Letsema grants and drastic reductions in 2020 and 2021, the Minority Front proposes alternatives for better informed decision making. Firstly, reliable data gathering on land health using IT, hence the department must employ skilled soil and water technicians, social contracts and partnerships with communities on natural resource management outcomes arranged in a stronger gender responsive uh, governance manner, improved intersectoral collaboration with Mzambelo on a local level, attract private investors who have financial access to develop stronger value chains to mitigate barriers and investment in pharma education and extension services as the most effective way to deal with social and behavioral changes. Honorable members, the National Assembly dealt with the one household, one hectare program in September 2019. And the challenges are climate change, financial exclusion, and inflexible government supply chain uh, processes. Therefore, the MF concludes on functional land management as the agriculture department needs to bridge the thing-do gap using a multi-stakeholder science policy interface, or else the achievement of all the 2030 uh, SDGs, which relate directly or indirectly to soil, remain elusive. The MF supports the vote three budget of 2.548 billion. Thank you. Oh, thank you, honorable member. You manage your time very well uh, because they're giving three minutes. Thank you. Uh, honorable members, uh, we don't have ATM and SADP, ICDP. Therefore, I'm calling upon honorable CJ Papas from DA who is going to speak for... No, 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 no. I'm wrong. I'm sorry. My apologies. After after the MF is Honorable Ted from the ANC, who is going to speak for eight minutes. Honorable Ted, forgive me for that oversight. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson, <clears throat> all members of the Procure Legislature, receive my revolutionary greetings on behalf of the African National Congress, led administration of KwaZulu-Natal. Can you please turn on your, your, your camera, Honorable Member? Oh. Do you see me, Honorable Chairperson? No. Oh. I don't know what is going on here. Just proceed, it's fine. Okay, I'm a chairperson. I'm a chairperson. Let me begin by stating the, uh, <coughs> the obvious fact that it is almost 42 years since Comrade Tabombegi, who later became a president of the ANC and the president of South Africa deliver a lecture in Canada where he was reflecting on the South African society creation. Deliberately, Honorable Chair, I have opted to open with the above mainly because of its relevance to the content we are going to raise today on behalf of the African National Congress, as mandated by the people of KwaZulu Natali in May 2019. Delivering the above-mentioned lecture or a chairperson for my president in Begi correctly contended as follows. I quote, the historical comprise of 1910 has therefore this significance that in granting the vanquished Boer equal politically and social status with the British veto. It imposed on both the duty to defend the status quo against especially those whom that status quo defined as the dominant. 
The capitalist class to whom everything has a cash value has never considered moral incentives as very dependable. As part of the arrangement, it therefore decided that material incentives must play a prominent part in consequently bought out the cold white population. It offered a price to the white worker and the African air farmers in exchange for a undertaking that they will shed their blood in defense of capital. Both worker and a farmer, like fitters, took the devil's offering and they will have to pay on the appointed day. The workers took the offering in, <clears throat> in monthly cash grants and reserved the jobs. The farmers took their share by having black labor, including especially prison labor directed to farms. They also took it in the form of huge subsidies and loans to help them to maintain a civilized standard of living. I close the quote. <clears throat> From one of the best input ever made by former President Mbegi to drive, to argue that as the current generation of cadres change with revolutionary responsibility to navigate toward a national democratic society. We must unapologetically so take lesson from how our yesterday enemy and exclusive white government. In contrast, <clears throat> ours must be to apply some of the methods used pre-1994 in order to empower and improve the human condition of everyone living in South Africa. However, we must remain deliberately biased to black in generally and Africans in particularly who are the victims of colonial apartheid regime. Or the chairperson Siazi Uguti, whenever our progressive ANC-led government designed programs aimed at benefiting the historically marginalized actions of the society, we are often accused of applying reverse racism, whereas ours is to correct the historical injustice of the past without being apologetic. Slalo will always remain committed to the National Democratic Revolution as the ANC maximum program, aimed at benefiting everyone living in South Africa. The Freedom Charter provided that South Africa belongs to all who live in it. Hence, in our strategy and tactics, we, we, we identify motive forces as, as agent of change, as being everyone who stands to benefit from our revolution program. Over the chair, the, the above bring us to a point that the repossession of land without compensation is necessary, an urgent program that must be supported because it will assist in advancing rural development. We know, as a matter of fact, that the Department of Agriculture and Rural Development, under the capable hands of Comrade Honorable M.E.C. Bongistole M. Loi, has done a lot in this regard. Hence, its main focus in 2020-21, as a captured in the case that the Department of Treasury estimate of provincial revenue and expenditure will be operationalized former production support. Unity an agricultural park in partnership with National De Department of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development. Chair, indeed, we agree that the, FPS the FPSU are pregnant with potentially to drive a variety of other projects, which may, although not limited to the partnership with Jobs Fund and the land banks. <clears throat> On a chairperson, it is irresponsible and politically ignorance for such a leader, <clears throat> Honorable Simango, to say this department is doing nothing in addressing issues in terms of uh, employment. This department, as the, <clears throat> as the ANC, we applaud the, de the department good intention of employing 144 additional graduates who will supplement other government programs to advance rural development. The decision by the provincial cabinet and the department must create, must create a mechanism in order to, pro, to produce its own seeds and seedling will go a long way, not only as part of RASET, but also in ensuring that the democratic government can implement some method used by the white regime 
for rural development and agrarian transformation. As President Oliver Tambo once said that the enemy is not always wrong. Hence, we can use one or two good things from the enemy. Consequently, of the chair, we must also not be ashamed, just like the white government, to pursue policies that will favor black farmers and rural community. This was also done by the white regime, as Ellen Patton uh, argued in 1992 in his History of Minor Workers, Volume 1. <clears throat> Quoting him, I quote, the commercialization of white agriculture was aided by the massive programs of subsidy, grant, and other aid. Assistance for farmers came from in the same shape of fencing, dams, houses, veteran, and horticultural advice. Farmers were cushioned by generous rail rates, by specially credit facilities, and by bonded tax relief. More early as 1908, it was remarked that it is probably that during the last 20 years, more money per head of the rural population has been devoted to the relief of white farmers in South Africa than any other country in the world. Close quotation. Arising from the above chairperson, let me conclude by saying that we must quicken the pace toward land expropriation without compensation and that our government in general and the Department of Agriculture and Rural Development in particular must be encouraged to continue with the good work to drive the rural development thus uplift our people without being apologetic. Or the chairperson, the ANC, support the budget. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member. The next, uh, in my list, the next speaker will be from DA, Honorable CJ Papas, for four minutes. Can you see me, Chair? Yes. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you very much, Chairperson, for giving me an, another opportunity. Um, the Democratic... So, so let me start with a little bit of rebuttal. Um, I think that it, it's very easy for, for the ANC and the EFF to come up here and just rattle off the same rhetoric that they always do. So there's not much substantive matter to tackle over here. Perhaps just to, to, to comment on Honorable Mshengu's uh, address. Honorable Mshengu, it's quite ironic that you speak about food security and making sure that people are fed when your own ANC government put a ban on the distribution of hot food to starving people. So I think before you start putting things into your speech, you need to do a little bit more research because it is really uncaring for you to put this ban in place. On, uh, Honorable Spila Sepeta, 10% um, budget towards uh, agriculture. I think this is uh, fundamentally to be fantastic, but I think you are overreaching a little bit here. We can't even spend the, the money that we've been given. I hope that you don't get in trouble as well for, for giving the, the uh, NEC a, a list of things to do, which was discussed. Uh, Honorable Mshengu, again, um, you, you want to support uh, her herbal uh, medicines and, and tribal med uh, traditional medicine, sorry. But for a year now, you've made very little progress in, in any work towards the legalization or, or the me of medical marijuana. So, you know, you complain about the commercial sector, but th the government is really hampering the small scale farmer who wants to progress. So I think you should really do some introspection there and push legislation instead of ANC rhetoric. Um, Honourable MEC, um, I'm not sure if you're aware, but you speak about accountability and corruption, and, and, and the Premier has also spoken about a full-scale skills audit. Currently in this province, there is no provincial framework for a skills audit. So no matter how much you try to fight um, the mafia within the different departments, your, your own government is unaware of the mechanisms that lack in order to actually make this happen. So either the Premier is lying or you are hopefully unaware of what is actually happening. Um, and you, you praise your department consistently, but you fail to mention how it was sent back from the scope of meetings. You fail to mention the, the wasteful and irregular expenditure. You fail to mention the almost 100 million rand uh, under expenditure, which is a lot of money for, for a province suffering extreme poverty. Perhaps, perhaps maybe I should you know, introduce you to, to the concept of cause and effect. Cause being what, um, ANC decisions, effect being decline and collapse. 
So input costs are increasing because of poor economic performance, uh, poor economic management. Crime is increasing because of poor budget and implementation. Lack of investment is decreasing because of bad policies by the ANC. So I think we need to get this right. Honorable Simango, you spoke about development in rural areas. I'd like to remind you that the IFP is in government in many rural areas, and this is partly your, your problem to, to shoulder. And propping up the ANC by continuously supporting the, this, the uh, budget is not helping the situation. So I'd grow a backbone yep. and make sure that we... are out of order uh, now. Chairperson, can I be protected? No, you're supposed to debate the speech, not to debate on Ms. Mang. All right, so the IFP is talking uh, nothing really again. Um, but I do agree with you on a lot of points about corruption. Um, Honorable Fraser, um, let me school you. You speak about our, our, our black brothers and sisters in the United States. Allow me to mention that 11 people were killed under the NC government during this lockdown. So if black lives matter, which they do, they also matter in South Africa, which the ANC has failed to acknowledge. Allow us to, to just look that after the apartheid government came the Marikana massacre, Essie Dimeni, and many other issues under your government. So instead of being like a weather lady and reading daily statistics about climate change, why don't you focus on actually turning this country around? Honorable Mteta, most of what you said was spot on, but it must be great uh, to, to have uh, someone to write your speeches. Maybe we should thank Floyd for that instead. Honorable Rajbanzi, it's like having an extra speaker for ANC time. Honorable Mteta from the ANC, blaming colonialism, apartheid, we're used to that by now, uh, but you fail to acknowledge the 74% failure rate in your department, the 37 properties that are vandalized, no framework for audits, 100 million under expenditure, 170, 170 million from Ntingwe. Um, I must agree with you, uh, I must actually agree with you and support you on this. Um, Samango mentioned that uh, you don't employ people. I think it's important to mention, Mr. Honorable Msibango, they do hire people all the time. Friends, family, members, lovers, all the time, cater deployment. So they are really hiring people. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you. Honorable Member, uh, we are going to afford this opportunity to the ANC, Honorable Member, S.A. Duma, for 12 minutes. Thank you so much, Honorable Chairperson, for affording us this opportunity. Greetings, revolutionary greetings to our Premier, Honorable Zigalala. Greetings to the MEC and the Chairperson of the Portfolio Committee. I think it was very strategic for our movement to boldly take a decisive decision of deploying two capable women in the form of Honorable MEC's Tolle and Honorable Speed, that they are doing a sterling job in trying to address the imbalances of the past. And just to cite and quote Martin Luther when he said those who are in front will always remain in front or the men at the back must run faster than the men in front. This is critical, Honorable Chaperson, what has been highlighted by the MEC. She is addressing a lot of issues. And I just hope that we are going to support almost all these new initiatives that are coming from this department. And they are just hitting the ground running at this point. I think you have already realized that Honorable Papas wants the department to teach the dog how to hunt and also teach the animal how to run at the same time, which is a serious contradiction, Honorable Chaperson, which is very difficult as well to debate with him because he comes from the school of thought, which creates an artificial environment of whites being superior and Africans in fear. Why would you say, let me school you, Honorable Fraser? You don't even know the qualifications of Honorable Fraser or her background, but you are assuming that you are so superior, you can give her some of the things. You are schooling Honorable Msiman, we are telling the Chaperson, and we are trying by all means as well, because what Honorable Papas is the remnant of apartheid. Little he is, young as he is, but he's coming from that understanding and is coming from a post because it comes from a farm background. It's coming from a family that was pulled in such a way that an African child is only capable of being a slave. An African child is only good to be utilized only. Not that you come with new creative models. One of the purpose, I don't know where he was during the starting of this pandemic called COVID-19. There was a hike of prices even from the, the commercial farmers. There was suddenly a hike of millets, suddenly a hike of potatoes, and they did not say a thing, even the conglomerate. It was this government led by Honorable Ziyalala 
that fought against the hike of prices was Honorable Zigal and his collective that went shop and ensure that they even take the consumables that are coming from the emerging farmers. And I, we thought that he was going to highlight some of those issues. He's complaining that about the unfair distribution of resources from the ANC and saying that we are creating a dependency society. It is easy for him, it's easy to talk when you come from the DAs because you are regarded as a head. So it's easy for you that you are guaranteed that you sleep nicely, the secured environment, and you sleep with a, a full stomach. Whereas on the other hand, on the other side, bread of, the, of our society, we must ensure, because there were imbalances of the past, which were created by purposes for fathers. So we understand, he's talking about the mafia. I don't know where there has been in Western Cape recently, where the DA is failing dismally to address some of these issues. One of them, has just highlighted some of the fundamental pillars of what will assist this department. We only differ with him when he said this department is dysfunctional. If he's so vigilant and so robust when it comes to those things, it will not be in, under his nose, Zululand district, where a mayor sits in the adjudication team, whereas the MFMA does not allow that. So, one of from the EFF is addressing and is also contradicting himself. He even used the term tenderpreneurs, which is the concept of those mentally colonized group that demonize everything from an African government. We wonder because they purport to be representing the left organization, the EFF, why would they also satanize the critical instrument of ensuring that our government create an enabling environment by even assisting or develop previous disadvantaged companies or SMMEs, yet is saying that tenderpreneurs. I think it must desist from using such terms because they show how shallow you are in terms of understanding even your ideology as an EFF. Let me just cite, Chair, our jubilation of the MEC when she presented the new technology that is going to be utilized in the Department of Agriculture, which is music to some of us who understand that as we speak, as we enter the fray of what industrial revolution, we need to adapt as well in that environment so that we are easy also competing with the other countries like the West. These days, you find that the farmers, the commercial farmers, you will use drone to harvest. I think our aim is to ensure that let us focus on imaging farmers, which is the component we didn't realize or we did not highlight or approach a person that in Sidara, where the MEC is, there is also the expectation or the invitation of AFASA, there is Chaperson F. Mtembo, which played a critical role in ensuring that they assembled emerging farmers that they donated as they are part of contribution on the issue of COVID-19. We saw the Prima, we saw the MEC. We know that you'll be lambasted by the media. We know that there'll be a lot of distortion. It has already catapulted in a form of Eastern Cape certain individuals claiming that some of the cash that were donated were stolen, which is, was a lie, which was trying just to defocus you, MEC. Don't be defocused. Continue to work with these emerging farmers. Continue to assist them building their sales yard. Continue to assist them in ensuring that the issue of planting season, they participate and partake, and you take almost all their product because this is the only solution. They've already shown their delicacy in understanding our issues that they are even contributing. They are taking from the little that they have because they are not supported in most cases. When they go to land bank, when they go to commercial banks, they demand collaterals. As we all know that as an African, it is just like a sin that it is not going to be easy for you to qualify. But this government, KZN government led by Honorable Zigalala, is making sure that this is becoming a reality, that they also participate and ensure that they are part and parcel. Honorable Papas, we thought that he is going to 
agree that this government, amongst other things, they have just assisted the emerging farmers through the formation and partnership. We know that he only represents or cry like a, an ambulance if there is an army worm that is affecting the commercial farmers. But if these, this army worm affects your emerging farmers, they don't say a word. It's the same when there is a crime or when people are being killed. They are always quiet, but one white commercial farmer will die. They will want the country to stand still. Farmer, purpose of this world, if there's injustice that's taking place across the board, they don't say anything because to them, black life doesn't matter. Shame on you, honorable purpose, that you are even making a joke. We thought you would be kind enough after yesterday we were able to say that DA must also say that what happened to George Floyd in America is painful and must not take place. Yet you still have an audacity of trying to school us. Unfortunately, we can just see that even at the level of high school, you are not smart. You are not even book smart because ideologically, we are not offering any solution. Unlike Rogers, you'll see that there is some strength. It might be informed that Honorable Rogers has just understand because he live with the real poor people. Unfortunately, because of the DA, he must also ensure that he articulate your bile, which does not assist our people. Let us on continue, Honorable Chairperson, by saying that the MEC is presenting the smart agriculture robots. Let us ensure that even when those robots come, let us partner with the, the institution like Moses Kotana Institution, Moses Kotana Institute, the UKZN, and ensure that these are manufactured local. In that way, the local manufacturing industry will certainly boom, and our African kids will certainly benefit as well. We have a lot of science students in our tertiary institution. They must get an opportunity, they must partake, and these robots will be the viable tool in ensuring that the thousand hectares that are found in KZN, they also partake. We must also address the issue of expropriation of land without compensation. It is still our pillar chair that give all these emerging farmers a chance. They've already proven themselves. Can you imagine the Afasas donated almost 30 cattle? What they will do if they are given more land? What they will do if they are given more seeds? Let us also advance the chair, the issue that has been raised by our Honorable MEC Chair, that as from now onwards, we will also ensure that we play a pivotal role on the issue of the new research unit. It is also music in our ear that this department will also ensure that you produce our seeds and seedlets. And if you can do that, the issue of GMOs will be the in thing of the past. Honorable Mushengu has mentioned that we have spoken about the issue of cannabis, but the offtake agreement has already been sealed and signed by Canada with commercial farmers. We thought that the people of Bebville, the people of Fumsinga, will be the one who will be benefiting out of this process. Our government will be supported by us if they ensure that we do partake, we do participate in ensuring that even Omam Tambo, even Oma Kumete, Aba Kamgem Singa, the Bonabas of Shumlayo, and Tenuin Sang, whether Ia Sachin Zis or Ecteni Sigan Jenga Makambi as a legal, no more Ia Sachin Zis and Jenga Mat drink as a was a water puzzle. See, Fisu would eat departments and the show would eat a couple of women seven as well. See, Albon Gika Lako, MC, Essin Bonan Lenza, no SOD, Omoshwabusiband, Niaba Catalela Bantu. Foot as funny as you have two boots, still tatter, still crampy, so what he missing as such is so ETH, missing as such is so opposition, a open vimba, is seven sin media, issue zombies into a zimbi, is seven sa wood in Javan and the expenditure, and deserve to balagay laband. Nicobe and it shall be a band, a lip pass, a lip pumping, nil bob and clean, and it was what is seized in pillows of Banyaband. It's true, horrible. Chaperson, that the issue of implements in the Department of Agriculture, they must ensure that they put more resources when it comes to that, because even when you have this research unit, ensure that the galvanized strategy that you give them more resources. Partner with KZN institutions, as I've already highlighted, they are going to be the viable tool 
of yes. ensuring that yeah, the tertiary form institution are participating. We support this budget, Honorable Chairperson, simply because the year on is was just changing pillows about. Se amuzo mshoni shu papa si eti agufanele kubeti iti panu for of agriculture, kufanele kubo social development or health, or your sees, or mwan bele ambila, china si tka. Agas understand is kuhu, so hulu menu kuti. Uma se sifigi le kubantu, kiyo fanes ba sise, kiyo fanes ba seven zi, se ten ba wazo kshomulu. Hulu menu oba, hulu lwa ngempela ago owenzi, kutu afrika nda wene aka suuswe, ayo bewe nda wene mbi, that is not arable, that is hinterland. Na mshanje siya show, kutu mwa ubu isu mshanje, ubu isu lagbant. O government, kiyo ba ilona tulus, elu yo fanel wazo glegelela, kiyo fanel ni nga sabi ike, Mshonishwa ustole mloi, uguti niba tate abandu niba train, niba tate ama imaging farmers. Azo kala vela ma commercial farmers, umase nigeza ifokas eni nga kulu ma imaging farmers na ma communal farmers. Nize ni nga abini nkinga na loko. Kufane ni partnerisha with commercial farmers, kota nazo uguti nkosonga ang the black majority in South Africa are still at the verge of utbanga sizaga halibona nga nga yesi moba vela kusoni. Sifisu kambisa leli puzwe zwe luguti. Ninga sabi umasentola isi mosu utfani ni hambele abani base makaya. Nyoba lege lela ekte nige ishu ya suma sake. Ne ishu ya zimbe mba hambisele ni kaiwe ngayo. Ninga yege gilo mkaka. Obiso wazo kujis lege lela. Akona aga masimge mpela chapesini esu wabone lele. Azo sizwa uguti. Hi department utarte ni patikula. Akwa hazu talegele le mnyango enjengo rural development. We support the budget. Thank you so much. Thank you, honorable member. Uh, honorable Duma, we are therefore giving this time to the honorable MEC, honorable Ustolem Lohi. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair and members. Firstly, I would like to thank um, all the members that participated in the debate. Um, I think there is um, a, a clear line of march uh, that uh, the department has been given uh, with the comments and the contribution that has been made. And we accept that uh, with humility and understanding that we have a responsibility and the department is supposed to be given oversight by the legislature. We accept that, and we don't have any qualms with it. Chair, I'm trying to address what Papas was saying, that um, I'm going, uh, we are going to have a problem with the chairperson having said what the MEC should do. And I believe that that is done in a, a spirit of the oversight that is done by the, the portfolio committee, which we have committed to adhere to all the work. Um, uh, Firstly, I can and you bong a good doll, honorable speed as a pet, which a person of your portfolio committee, a gomsebenzi, a bowenzai, got a footing a full footing bong a beggar in Kulumayak, a report here, a committee, Nezinto Abafis Gutibas Bonne, see a fist good decisions on Kelly's into a shilo, a gizbalile pansy, a zinclanu, zonkes is a wisella report. As expected, Uguwa sends in Jalo, Sibonga Kulu, Sibonga Futinang is supporting Nang Angela, and his guide Tangayo, as Siboni Tina Wukona, Owana Alai, we are struggling Saka Kulu and Zanjalo, and Kubega Stalo, Ukubega Futin Jong was shallow way to Uwen Zanjal, which is Consegues, which is Awens and Sabin's way to the Angelin in Delegil. Honorable Mshengu, Siabonga Kulu, Siafuna Gushuguti on matters, Okulmengao. So I was a beggar police as we have asked us to do so. We are going to deal with it. And also the issue of which is the issue of the cannabis and in the corner, the planting and also the licensing of it. We are going to deal with it and uh, with it. And we have started discussing the matter in our cluster, acid cluster, and also in the in the social cluster, uh, where we, we are saying what is it that we can do to ensure that the benefit goes to the African people who had started planting e cannabis, and now it's not longer a benefiting them. And then the support that we are going to do, we are going to raise the profile, the profile Ilima Ilitsima, as you have um, a, a indicated. Uh, Honorable Msimanga um, Siabonga, thank you very much for the contribution. Uh, we know 
that uh, you have been raising issues, especially the issue of forensic investigation. Unfortunately, some of these investigations are not done by uh, us as the department is done by the department, uh, the provincial treasury. But on matters that you have indicated that need clarity and need closure, we are committing that as a department, we are going to deal with it and bring the report before the portfolio committee. Uh, we thank you very much uh, for alerting us on some of the matters, but also to say that to you, uh, we are going to bring back the report as expected. Uh, we are going also to correct the issue of our expenditure, as we have indicated. And I don't want uh, to, 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 to take us back and then start uh, going to the report. But uh, with the issues that has been raised, which I think I must also directly respond to go, 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 go. Good purpose, uh, honourable purpose. Honourable purpose, I think uh, we have to rise as members of this legislature and be responsible when we, we articulate. And I think uh, we can't reduce each other because now we are given a, a platform to debate and they put a funny comment on individual honourable members. And I'm not going to, 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 to say that, but I'm cautioning you, you are young, you must grow and understand that we have dignity, we have integrity that we have to protect. And we are not going to allow anybody to take that away from us. And I, I am warning you and also saying to you, stop doing those things. Be, debate your issues, debate it constructively and criticize constructively with the aim of giving them the guidance or contributing to the, to the progress of, 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 of the work that we are doing. Uh, I'm not going to respond to the issues because we're just talking about mafia. I don't have mafia in my department since I've come. I've not seen any mafia. I've seen uh, staff members who are willing to work, giving, keep being given direction. And if there are mistakes that have been done, those will be corrected in a manner that is constructive and trying to build those individuals and not destroying people. We are not in a business of destroying and embarrassing people. We are in a business of... of, of, of building people, skilling people, and ensuring that people are delivering the services for our people. Um, I have um, uh, that, um, yes, we have uh, started the process of dealing with the internal control. We have put the, the turnaround strategy. I, I know that in the first meeting, the manner in which our work was organized did not give a good impression to the to the scope. But we went back and then we, we corrected that. And I think that it must be it must be wise to say that, yes, you did make a mistake, but you have shown that you are committed because you went back, you corrected what, what, what you, you did not do right, and you brought a report. And let's stick to what is, has been corrected rather than going back uh, to the thing that uh, was not right. I don't think that is, is, is progressive enough and also is encouraging when we are doing the work and, and expected to do work with them, uh, with yourselves. Uh, uh, Honorable Purpose, I think you must also a, 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 a accept, uh, accept that and then move on with you with the life. Uh, I can't live my life um, because everybody uh, have a, a page that they uh, don't Chairperson, to, uh, point of order. Yes, Honourable Member. Chairperson, I'd like to raise um, uh, Rule 67 2 and I'd like your office to investigate it. Uh, the MEC uh, threatened uh, Honourable Papas uh, with, a, with a verbal warning. And if you look at Rule 67.2, it says that uh, accusations or improper motives, I would like you to investigate that uh, accusation made by the MEC, or in fact the threat uh, of a warning that was made against... Uh, Honourable Papas, I'm not sure what the re what the result of the warning would be, but I'll leave it to your hands. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honourable Member, but I haven't heard that part that was threatening about the warning. Uh, so you you have a copy of the recording, it's Chair. You can go through it. It's not difficult, I promise. You. Okay, it should be investigated. Thank you. Can you proceed, Honourable Embassy? Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, Chair, I'm not going to uh, entertain some of the things that Papa has said because they were ridiculous, uh, trying to demean us as, as the department and, and the work that we are doing. Chairperson, uh, on a point of order. Uh, the other thing that uh, Chairperson... Chairperson, that point of order. 
I thought we were going to finish. Hello, yes. Chairperson, Rule 66 is quite clear. The MEC has been in this legislature forever. She should know that a member is referred to as an honourable member and not by their surname. She continues to do this. And if anything, she's in fact bringing the legislature and the stability of this committee into question, and it's her own committee. I ask that, she, that you please and tell her that she referred to a member as an honourable member. Just, just an oversight. I, I think an honourable MSC is aware of that. This um, is What do you know about I go farming when I'm. Continue, honourable. Oh, I'm Honourable Rogers, honourable papas. I've been calling them honourables, uh, but yeah, there are issues that I've raised which are not honourable in the in the speaking of of uh, papas. Then that was it, and uh, and and that's that's where I stop. So the, uh, I want to thank also Honourable Fraser for the for 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 contributing and telling uh, and and and, and assisting uh, assisting us to say we must also look at the issue and the effect of the climate change and and intervention that we are doing. I, I'm certain that um, uh, honourables will will agree with me with the presentation that we have put forward. We have said what is it that we have done when there was drought last year. We did intervene, although that was not in our budget, and we tried to find some funding to deal to intervene. We have also in COVID, and I'm not sure why honourable purpose is getting that that we are not assisting during these times. But uh, I know the committee has the information, and we have given them the information of what is it that we have been doing and we are continuing to do, and we have never taken any work of, of, of social development in dealing and we have taken the part as they asked by the uh, executive council uh, with the leadership of our premier to say what is it that the agriculture can contribute and also how can we make sure that the food security uh, is, 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 is the food is provided for the people during lockdown as agriculture as president has asked us to do the work uh, and also become uh, the provider of food for our people. Uh, I'm sure that they will go back and, 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 and rehearse that and see what is it that the president and the premier has said. Um, with uh, uh, um, Honorable Mte Atwawe EFF, thank you. Uh, we, will, uh, we are committed, but there is no lack of oversight. We have been doing oversight. The, the committee has been doing oversight. We have an, uh, also been doing oversight, but we are certain that um, the issues that we are raising that has happened previously, we have presented the report a turnaround strategy before the committee to say what is it that we are going to do uh, to turn the situation around. We are hoping that you will support us and you will be with us until we finalize this uh, and, and, and assist us where we see that we are lacking in turning this, the department around. I'm hoping that uh, we will we, we'll get um, a, a more a, 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 a advice or assistance in respect to that. Uh, with uh, Honorable Rajpansi, thank you very much, uh, uh, Honourable uh, Member, for the uh, work that you have uh, asked us to, to look at and say uh, we really, really appreciate your contribution. Uh, we always find uh, peace when you know that uh, whenever you are raising issues, we are, raise, we are raising them and you are critiquing us uh, constructively and you are giving us what is it that you think can also assist us. We'll take those advice and look at them and in, uh, inject them to our plans as moving forward. Thank you, Honorable Ntetwa uh, of the ANC for uh, uploading the, the work the department is doing and also to say that um, we'll continue to have policies that are in favor of those that have been disadvantaged uh, for a, a quite long time, but we have not said that we are going to uh, we are not going to assist the commercial farmers and those that uh, are well off. If there is a need for us to intervene, we'll do so as we have been doing so. And we are working with Guanalu and other associations within the province who are our stakeholders, and they have not uh, complained of anything except individuals that are coming, uh, not even farmers, but they are born of farmers or they are related to farmers, and they complain. But with the, 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 the formations that we are working with, we have not received anything. Uh, um, as I said, uh, Honorable Papas, we note that we are part of the debate, but there is nothing that I can go further to respond to. Uh, with the thing that you have said of mafias and all those stuff, I can't uh, 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 continue to explain that. Uh, I know that you have said we, we have um, uh, structures that are vandalized. We brought a report on the tractors. 
We brought the report before the committee on the on our offices and what is it that we are doing. As we said that we have a problem with the office of Umzimkulu, uh, I'm reporting to the honorable members that we have um, a, a, a met with the Department of Public Works, Honorable uh, Ngonyeni, and we discuss all the projects that uh, we, we're supposed to be doing with the public works. And I'm happy with the progress that I've seen. And as of uh, yesterday, uh, the HOT was in Umzimkulu, dealing with the matter of Umzimkulu. The, 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 the temporal offices have been finalized as uh, 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 assisted by public works. And we are going to, do, to, to continue working with all the department. Uh, Honorable Duma, thank you very much also. Uh, we really, really want to partner with everybody. And as UAFASA has come on board and others have come on board, and we are working with all the institutions. You know, in my speech, I have indicated that with issue of, of technology, with issue of research, we are not going to work as a department alone, but we are going to work with other, other uh, institutions uh, of higher learning or uh, almost Skotane, uh, or Mangosutu Technology, uh, uh, Technicon, and also uh, it was in Natal University. Uh, uh, we are going to work with them to ensure that uh, whatever we are doing in research and also in other aspects of technology, we have the support and the work uh, is done with them uh, in cooperation. With those people that want to work with us, our hands are open. And on the matter that of Intingwe and other 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 uh, uh, entities, we have reported in this. Um, uh, uh, a speech that uh, this is what we are going to do and how we see it. And I'm going to I'm going to be upfront. I'm very passionate about it. We have a product of a tea in Wazulu Natal that we should be proud of. We should be proud of our own product and our produce. And I cannot say that I'm, I'm going to be uh, backing off to say no because they are saying that it has failed for a long time. Let's try it. Let's partner with uh, 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 private pa uh, uh, partners so that we, we, we uplift this, we, we, we rebuild it, and turn it around for the better of people of Wazulu Natal. I was not going to let, uh, let go of people that are getting job in that uh, T estate to say that because uh, it has failed for so long time, for, for so long, then I, sh I should just shut and uh, close doors and move on. Uh, we, we can't do that. We have to clean our uh, the situation and ensure that people of Inca and that, because that, that T estate is in the middle of rural, of rural area. And we have had our members previously talking about let's develop rural areas and develop rural economies. That is part of the work that we are doing in ensuring that let's make people to be aware and understand the importance of Intingwe estate, T estate, and what contribution it can make in developing the economy of that area of Inkanda and surrounding, and also of KwaZulu Natal, because these these two at once it was uh, in the shelves of Woolworths, and we cannot shy away from that. And it's our product, and we are proud of it. And I think with the support that we have been given by the committee and the executive council, we'll continue, uh, and the legislature that has been giving us, we'll continue to embark on this project. And we are promising that as 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 we finish it. People will be proud of KwaZulu Natal and be proud of the product that we are doing. With the work uh, that uh, and the contribution that has been made, we're taking it with humility and we don't see any offense in all the other matters that have been raised and also the guidance that have been given by the committee through the chairperson of the committee. We really appreciate that. I want to say that uh, uh, to our premier for the work that uh, he has been always been there uh, to say, why can't you try this? Why can't you try this? What is happening with that thing? We really appreciate that we don't see any snake on, on, on such um, uh, engagement, which are critical and also important to us for this department to turn the corner uh, as we, we are guided. And I want also to thank all of you, Chairperson, with the opportunity to thank the, the, the members of the legislature for participating in this um, uh, debate and also those that were part of the engagement, even though they have not been in the list of the uh, speakers. We really appreciate the work that is being done. May we rise and come together and work together to build this KwaZulu Natal, not for our uh, betterment, but for the better of our country and also for the well-being of our, our communities. If you want to talk about the people who are talking 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 about the people who
akasoze ashinja akas noma bonke abanye abantu amanye amasector angashinja kodwa agriculture will be there because sizodinga ukudla sizodinga ukugqoka sizodinga ifenisha sizodinga zonke izinto esizisebenzisayo njengabantu ngithi kephezu komkhono kwaZulu Natal ngale budget esiyibekile esihlalo eh ne support esiyitholayo eh kuma members onke ase legislature sithi asiqhubeke ngokubambisana siye phambili siyabonga kakhulu with the opportunity that you have given us thank you thank you thank you very much honorable mc and thanks to all the honorable members who are in attendance this uh, leads us to to the point where we have to adjourn but before we do that i want to thank each and every one of you for the participation we started so in a very at a very we started very early with our program from public works and now we've just completed six hours 32 minutes we started like long time ago now we have to go for a break uh, we are going to take like 50 minutes meaning that we'll be we need to reconnect at 15 20 at 20 minutes past three. By that time, we'll be doing the transport, which will be chaired by the Honorable Member Unkos, Babu KK. I want to further thank you, each and every one of you. You've been of a great help to assist, even in times where we couldn't see or we couldn't get to see eye to eye, but, but you managed to make it easier for us to continue presiding over this sessions. Thank you very much. Manzini, Siabo, the job well done.